What's up and welcome back to Kind of Funny Saw in Review. Of course, I am Tim Geddes. And real quick, I just want to say I love you guys so much. Each and every one of you at this table, Alfredo and Austin, and all of you at home. I was thinking about it this weekend. I was thinking about it uh, last, mm -hmm. last week when we saw this movie in theaters. I'm just so lucky that this is my life, this is my job, that I just get to hang out, talk to you guys about Saw 10, the 10th movie in this franchise, being in theaters, being with all of you in the theater itself, hearing the music, all of us oh. hearing the groans and the oohs and the ahs, the look away, <laughs> us leaving the theater, just talking about how ridiculous it all was. Like, this is so special. And I, I am blown away by the support the show has had, that this series of In Review, because uh, I thought we were going to be hitting, like, two or three K a week. And we have not been, we've been hitting way closer to that 10 K mark, which is awesome. I also thought that there was no chance in hell that Joey was going to be happy with me after oh, the yeah. first half of the franchise. I was like, <laughs> she'll be in for a bit, but then she's going to hate it. Nope. She's no, here. It's so fun. I thought for sure. Nick Scarpino was going to drop off after the first one, but here he is still raring to I go. I mean, these are, these movies are guilty pleasure movies yeah. and they're just a blast. Mm -hmm. And I just, really I, are. I have an Alfredo here. Somebody I've known and loved so long talking about this franchise to talk about it with him professionally in any any way <laughs> shape or form it's just yeah. it's hilarious I'll the fact that andy who doesn't watch anything scary is so in for he's in oh these have watch. been my things yeah the saw's been my been a, a love of mine for a while uh, is tim about to retire what's going no, on no i just i'm just okay. honestly i'm just really 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 like <laughs> i love you too man life's hard sometimes you know what i mean works hard i'm not saying anything recently but it's just like right. sometimes things could not be fun sometimes things can just be like so much work and so much stress and all this shit this is what makes it all worth it so yes. thank all of you and thank you guys for watching and listening this is but my favorite interview that i've ever done it's been awesome man it's been so much fun so let's have even more fun because nick scarpino's on one today everybody <laughs> i'll tell you i'll tell you what tim i'll tell you what who owes you a debt of gratitude my wife mm -hmm. because every october right around right around the last week of of uh october, september i start queuing them up friday the 13th nightmare on elm street just see just pepper them yeah. out. Mm -hmm. but a little psychological warfare just one Oh, what's that? Oh, I, don't, I don't know how that got there i don't know how that got there. you're buying billboards around town just to see like oh get that in my head last night cleared out all of the lists just put horror movies on there right <laughs> just did because i'm like we're watching scary movies yeah dude. Weekend. but mm -hmm. the problem is because i've had to do the saws and all the stuff that's scratching the itch for me mm -hmm. so what we watched last weekend was freaking great british bake-off and the, the david beckham documentary <laughs> <laughs> i was like she's getting she can't keep getting away with this <laughs> so yeah i love that so much and i love you guys like i said you all can watch the show on youtube.com slash kind of funny and roosterteeth.com the show of course it's kind of funny in review where each and every week we get together to rank, review, and recap different movie franchises. Uh, we're coming to the end of the line of Saw. We're doing things a little out of order, like I keep saying. We're doing Saw 10 today, but next week and the week after that, we'll close it out by going to Jigsaw and then to Spiral from the Book of Saw to close out Saw in review for now. Because rumors have it. Saw 11 and 12 are being talked about. Oh so my God. Oh my we're goodness. so back. <laughs> and money talks, man. Let's do it. Let's Get to the, well, I guess people can't go to the theaters anymore for this, but definitely support when this comes out on, uh, on streaming. Let's I'm go. hoping, man. I'm, I'm hoping, but uh, you can also get this show as a pot. And then we're going to get into, uh, back to the Marvel universe. So Captain Marvel or the Marvels and uh, Loki season two in review. Wait, Wait, is this no longer in theaters anymore? No, we went That's last we day. Went on Thursday. Yeah, oh, that was shit. Quick. <laughs> okay. yeah. That's why we had to go that night. Oh, damn. Okay, yeah. got you. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It, it might be in theaters in some places, but at least in our area, it, it is not. Yeah. Thank you, Tay Tay. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, you can get this as a podcast. So it's your favorite podcast service for Kind of Funny in Review, and we will be right there for you. Uh, if you want to go above and beyond, like James Hastings, Jedi Master Deadpool, Casey Andrew, and Nathan Lamoth, you can go to patreon.com slash kind of funny, where you can get the show ad free and you can watch live as we record it, like Alex J. Sandoval, Madeline Stanley, and. Katie. Katie Butler have done. Thank you all so very much for hanging out with us throughout this adventure. Uh, today we're brought to you by BetterHelp and Immersion Fragrances, but we'll tell you all about that later. We're talking about socks, baby. What's up, Nick? Socks. No, dude. please. Are you tell just me. thinking about when Andy told Joey you about Joey and to the bed? Rockin'? No. <laughs> 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 yeah, okay. okay, so sometimes when you talk, Tim, and we talk about people in the chat, mm -hmm. in the live chat, like Madeline Stanley or Alex J. Sandoval or Casey Butler. I start. I I do the thing. I do, Katie. Oh, no. I do the thing where I do. I'm like, you know, the go. Like if you're like Tim Gaddis, I'm like the get man, the get. And we got to Katie Butler. I was like the butt. <laughs> That's what you wanted. And I was like, yep. don't say it. Oh, here's Greg. Sorry to interrupt everybody. You just you know, 
kind of funny, believes in charity. So I'm going around the office, <laughs> collecting things and putting them in a box to send to Alfredo. So I knew, he, I knew he's it. on such hard times, he had to sell everything on his bookshelf. <laughs> I'm finding things we can send him to put on his bookshelf. So go ahead and slack me if there's anything you want to send to our down on his luck friend Alfredo. Oh, okay. It's only a matter of time before he's going to have to go off and go to the Goodwill shop and sell those headphones. <laughs> I'm already doing my room. <laughs> What's up? What's incredible is that. As soon as he had the box, I knew. I knew it was a damn What's incredible is all of that stuff was from my desk. Yeah, yeah. Every, single every single item. item <laughs> every single item on there. I would like to apologize to, to Katie Butler. I did not mean that as an insult to you in the live chat. That's just how stupid I am. So there you go. That's how life works. Thank you sometimes. for joining us I, and your support. I need to let everybody know this real quick. God, there's so much colliding there's at so once. Much. Greg Miller went off today on Games Daily about Alfredo's background. I don't know why, but he did. And then uh, right before we went live. Live for this, um, Nick looked over at Joey and said, don't you think that we would just make the best pro professional wrestling tag team yeah. in this office? Yeah. And it was just like, why would you say something like that? And then Nick follows it up with, what would our name be? As like, you do the work yeah, like, for this yeah. idea. Here's, the, here's <laughs> the, the first step of us being the best tag team is usually the name, but no, Nick didn't even have that. So then we called him out on it. So what did Nick come up with? Not even on the spot. Took a couple minutes. What did he come up Kicking with? Kicking on ideas, my head. Joey and the Rocket. <laughs> Joey and the Rocket. But, whatever the confidence. fuck that means. But I'm Joey. <laughs> no, because we made fun of you for not making that joke. No, no, You're not allowed no. to make this. They didn't see it. For that. They didn't see that. I'm taking credit for it. And our and, and our and our and our tagline is going to be "They only go up." They only go up, everybody. <sighs> don't think, huh? Like it's not awesome. First off, second off, Alfredo, I'm so tired of dealing with these people that don't understand improv. It's yes yeah, and, not it. no, you're yes stupid, and. Nick. Yes and. <laughs> not not uh, yes and brick wall. Yeah, fucking uh, brick, brick walls. All I'm, I'm fucking running into brick walls. I bust through them. I get another fucking brick wall. like, no, don't take my joke. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know, I used to, I used to, I used to tee it up, tee it up for Andy, and fucking now Andy Carl just does the thing. <laughs> Andy just does the thing where I throw it up in the air, and Andy watches it drop right to his fucking feet. Carlos Menskelia. <laughs> Do not equate me to Carlos <laughs> Menskelia. <laughs> he was way more. More successful than I'll ever be. From Nick, I've ever seen. <laughs> I love this fucking show. We're talking about Saw X, Ooh. aka Saw Ten, aka Socks. Alex had of all the chests is JoJo and the Pino. <laughs> That's pretty good. That's pretty good. I like that. I hate this. <laughs> We're gonna be the best tag team ever. Hit the rock. Hit the rock. This one had a runtime of an hour and fifty-eight minutes, making it pretty much by far the longest Saw movie. Well, uh, <laughs> uh, it came out on September 29th, 2023. Um, it was originally supposed to be October 27th, 2023, which would have stayed in line with all the rest cool. of the Saw movies. And then they just changed it. I don't know why. They just announced it at Comic-Con. And I don't know that that was the best choice for them, but maybe, when, maybe they're trying to get away from the Marvels. I'm not sure. When it's several weeks after Labor Day, it's Saw. That's what they say. <laughs> That's the good old That's saying. Chance. That's the tagline. Is uh, there anything else big that comes out that day? No. The Five Nights at Freddy's? If they're, but that's on Peacock. Oh, let me tell you about this Five Nights at Freddy's movie. They take this thing Is way too seriously. Theaters? It's theaters it's, and Peacock yeah, simultaneously. So. Oh, I guess yeah. I'll watch it on Peacock. Andy leans over to me during the preview. He's like, I'm really taking this movie seriously. This yeah, Five Nights at Freddy's. It's kind of the vibe's kind of off on that. That trailer though. needed to be like a little sillier. While still you said zombie land. You mentioned zombie land. Yeah, like, yeah, that could have been the vibe. But it, it was just like so, yeah. so serious. Like, Madeline like, Stanley says, I think they're trying to avoid the Exorcist, but then the Exorcist moved because of Taylor. Oh God. Jesus! We are playing. She's moving dangerous games mountains here. Mountains over here. Okay, but the Exorcist movie also got like a twenty-one. Yeah, and only liked it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, this one was once again directed by Kevin Gredart, who is the editor of the Saw franchise. He also did Saw 6, Saw 7, and now Saw 10. Uh, the music was done by Charlie Clauser once again. And goddamn, my boy went off in this one. <laughs> the, every, every, the, 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 the reveal song that starts playing at the end, like the Saw theme song, it's called mm -hmm. Hello Zep. Can you? And uh, yeah, Andy. <laughs> Not the sound fun I expected. <laughs> <laughs> love that love that um but every every saw the, the they kind of iterate on a little bit this one is is called uh zep x and oh, it's shit. on spotify and apple music and i've been listening oh, to it all day it and it's six minutes of just build rise fall that's build so, rise that's fall. so cool it's awesome <laughs> zep x, x, x in the socks movie <laughs>
<laughs> so good. Uh, this one had a budget of $13 million, which is um, about in line with the originals, a little less than uh, Saw 3D, which is which is good for them. Um, this one has, so far, a box office of $71.3 million, um, which contextually with how movies are nowadays, pretty damn good still for, for where it's at. Not the glory days of Saw where it's making 136 million or whatever, but um, still better than um, Saw 6, which was at 69 million and uh, better than Jigsaw and Spiral, which I think is a bit more relevant to everything. Um, it was uh, below the average opening weekend of the franchise, which is 23 million. Um, this one was about 19 million opening, but uh, higher than the recent installments of Spiral, which only had 8.8, .8, and Jigsaw that had 16.6. So we're tracking good. Things are looking pretty nice right now. Um, yeah, that's all that stuff. Remember, this is a full spoiler review. So if you do not want to be spoiled on Saw 10, turn away now, come back later, or forever hold your peace. I want to start with Nick Scarpino. Yes, sir. What did you think of Saw 10? Uh, I thought this movie was absolutely terrible and i had a blast watching it with you guys <laughs> um it's it's a perfect saw movie it was really fun it, it, i think it's kind of two movies in one i think uh it is a poignant journey of a man <coughs> coming to terms with his own mortality and then it is a bad netflix original movie that is shot all in one place and lit very evenly uh and terribly um but all of them were great it had a stupid twist at the end that i think pretty much all of us saw coming but it's a Saw movie. They keep it going, and they are uh, what's the what's the actor's name that plays John Kramer? Tobin Bell. They're 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 really getting the most they possibly can out of this guy, and I'm all for it. I had a blast. Um, there's, I mean, I'll save it for the for the actual thing, but there's just one glaring criticism that I have of this, and I think we'll all share in this, and so I'll just I'll reserve that for when we get to the plot. Oh, okay. Yeah, we'll talk about it then. Joey Noel, what about you? <clears throat> Man, is it nice to have a Saw movie without Jill? <laughs> like, that's really <laughs> what I'm coming right. from. <laughs> I, think, I think that's why this movie is so good, is because she's <laughs> not in it. Even like the actors that we don't know in this movie, I think are leagues above the ones in previous movies. So I think it's enjoyable to watch. Right. It is a little bit weird to have a Saw movie where you like are empathizing <laughs> with Jigsaw um, and Tobin Bell the whole time. It kind of reminds me not as glaringly as when we did uh, Don't Breathe in review and we watched the second one and it's like, oh, now we're like kind of rooting for you, even though you've done all of these terrible things. Um, but I do think that uh, the whole premise of him going through all of this treatment and trying to do it and getting like swindled out of everything, is, I think is a compelling story and an interesting way to see um, kind of like the original thing of Sav making people pay for what they're doing um, and not... Uh, I don't remember what I was going with that. <laughs> just completely fell out of my head. Um, but I had a really great time. I think the uh, the founder of that company, the daughter of the guy, I forget what his name was, and her like counterpart in her like boyfriend or whatever, I think are like some of really fun Saw characters that we haven't had in a while. I feel like we don't get like villains that are fun to root for or fun to watch, and I really appreciated their uh, like roles in this. And then I wasn't expecting a small child. Me neither. <laughs> Me neither. Alfredo Diaz, what do you think of this one? Um, I enjoyed this one. I it was close to loving it, but um, the end fell apart for me. I guess we'll we'll get to that when we start actually like breaking it down. Um, but overall, I did like this movie. I like the fact that it was a very personal game for Jigsaw, and um. Another thing that I really liked is we've seen so many Saw movies at this point, and there are a lot of people who deserve what's happening to them. And then now there's a handful of people that it's just like, you're just caught in the crossfire. I, it's, it's so much, it sucks so much. You're in a, a jigsaw trap. You kind of don't deserve to be. And every person in a trap, I was just like, these people suck. Like they deserve to be in a trap. Um, and then it's also kind of cool seeing um, kind of like someone one up Jigsaw. It's not something you really like see too often. And I don't know, it felt a little bit more visceral with the way that he was like there in person. Yeah. Um, and seeing him overall as a protagonist was pretty cool. Andy, this movie starts off so unbelievably strong. 
and then that middle twist happens when we kind of find out what happened to Jigsaw and I like my mind was blown I thought that they did such like I I kind of saw it coming I just wasn't sure how they were going to pull it off um and I thought they did such like a masterful <laughs> job with editing and setting expectations and like again like the first like 30 minutes I I looked at Nick and I was like well, why is this so good <laughs> like, <Yeah. laughs> like it just didn't feel like I was watching what I was thinking I was in store for uh and then you know they bring back some of the, the old callbacks to the silly really erratic editing styles that made me smile it was like just it made me feel nostalgic for the older films um but then I I agree with Alfredo I think I'm going to go opposite of Joey and say that like I I did not like the villains in this at the very very end I didn't like like I've always felt like one thing as unbelievable as all of Saw can be one thing that it has I think really nailed in a way is like character motivations that like whatever a character does something it always kind of feels justified for how they're feeling in that moment mm. and I just like if they're scared they may react some way or these characters are gassed up and going crazy and they don't want to die and saw two so they start getting murderous like i just feel like in this one uh yeah the villains at the end just kind of really didn't do it for me um but still a really enjoyable time cringing with everybody in the theater at all the awful gore and just like what the fuck it was awesome to kind of hear everybody around us and it was like a it wasn't a packed theater, but it was more people there than I thought there would be. And yeah, I had a, I, I had a great time. I, I do think my expectations were set a little too high, though. Mm. Uh, I think like Matt Rohrbeck, I'm looking at you. <laughs> I wish you didn't tweet out. So I'm not. I'm going to block you from Twitter, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm kidding. I love you. Um, I, I think I maybe read and b bought into the hype a little too much that like this is the best saw of all of them or whatever. And um, yeah, maybe that's my fault. So we got yeah, we we, we came in real cocky, by the way. Can I tell the story of how we came in? Let me hear. What does this even mean? We know. come into the theater. There's no one in there. We think to ourselves, we're the only real true Saw fans. We're here. We're here yeah. with this movie last day. <laughs> do we just do rookie mistake? Sit wherever the hell we want to sit in this theater. And in this day and age, Andy, can you can't believe that. that people are still doing this? And I don't even, my, that little voice in me that's like, don't break the rules, didn't even perk up. I was like, didn't surely, you? I was like, surely no one's going to move us from these seats. And sure enough, the next group of people that came in are like, uh, I think, I think you're in the wrong spot. And they say it to Andy and Andy who didn't know we were sitting on a spot. He came later. I didn't like, know we were in the steps to these guys. I didn't know. Oh, we were dude, in the we're in the right row. I was like, it says six through ten on my thing, and Nick was like, no, we're in the wrong row. And I was like, oh man. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> but it was it was awesome seeing like, and then having to be seen watching the gore in this because I was like, oh man, everyone's gonna like. I had to hide my eyes a bunch of time. I look over at Joey. Joey's hiding Joey's under, just full like, in, just, uh, underneath their hoodie. I was like this the whole time. <laughs> and then and then it kind of proving my point. I look over at Andy, and Andy's just stone faced watching it, enjoying all the all the blood. <laughs> I t I told I told you I was I brought the snacks. I brought in a little box of uh, uh y'all know I love dots candy. Everybody knows oh, that. Yeah. I love dots candy. You know I did not know that. Okay. I love dots candy. Everybody hate like everybody always hates on them. They say they're okay. bland. I like I the Gigi fruit, which I feel like is a dots. I bought Gigi. sour. I I recently discovered sour dots, so I bought a box of sour dots. Mm. Had it in my little uh, pocket right there. Just going to town on these fucking candies. This is good. Time, You're having a great dude. time. Nick, can you tell me what happened before? Like, let's rewind a little bit. Let's flash back. All right. We'll change the sure. color look of whatever scene's going on right now. Mm -hmm. What happened before we actually got into the the theater? We Not got we got then. snacks. We got snacks and then it was you, me, Joey, uh, Gia, and that was it. There's the yeah. four of us. And we we're waiting for Andy, but we decided to go in ahead of time. And so I just had to tell the person at the door, hey, we have one more person coming with us, let them through. That's all. <laughs> That's all that happened. Yeah, yeah. That, that, I didn't describe Andy at all. I don't even think you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Factually, that is what happened. The words used were, hey, um, the other guy in our group, he's going to be coming soon. He's the guy with the anime hair. Give him shit. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> what is wrong with this? <laughs> Fun time. I keep, I like keep people on their toes off right now. I'm a yes it. and man. I like to create situations. And then, I, and then they, the anime. <laughs> they asked me, did anything happen? And I was like, no. And then I kind of thought, I was like, Nick, this person was like, I fucking hate my job. I don't want to mm -hmm. be here. I mean, I'm not going to fucking entertain you all. <laughs> like, I just, I, I was giving this person free license to just take one out on a client. <laughs> on a, on a client you know? Yeah. Like all these people that get over my theater or they do this stupid thing where it's like, can I go out and come back in? I don't care. 
I'm not watching you do the, I'm not actually checking your ticket. Most of the time you can hold up a blank phone. These people go, great. I love it. Get the fuck in. I hate my job. <laughs> I, I gave her one little moment of beautiful truth. <laughs> and then Andy dropped the ball again. How did Andy drop the ball? <laughs> <laughs> I'm right there with you guys. I loved this. I, I don't think it's the best Saw movie. I do think that it is so much better than a Saw movie in 2023 had any right to be. Can't believe that we got uh, Amanda back. Can't believe we got Tobin Bell's Jigsaw back being the lead, really having him be the lead of this movie in every single way, being in as much of it, being in a trap against a child. It was <laughs> just so many unexpected things, which is kind of what I love about Saw is like being blown away and just being like, what are they really fucking doing this? Even if it's not the most surprising thing, it's, surprising because of how weird it is or how like just unexpected it is like i don't even know uh but i i had a great time hoffman all of the him getting phone calls or like him calling the detective throughout yeah. i was popping off i'm yeah. like this is so fucking cool and like they are going to set this up perfectly for if they do a sequel and then that post credit scene where we <laughs> see the fucking bathroom again and the, we all were thinking the guy they set up in the beginning of the movie. What about him? He the seemed star. like an yeah. asshole. Like the scar mm -hmm. guy. Like, what, motherfucker better be tested. Oh, it was perfect. Hoffman making his appearance. Come on. Like, literally could not ask for more for a post-credit scene in, in this movie. They totally nailed that. I am all over the place in terms of the quality of the movie. Like, I don't know that I could say I like the first half better than the second half or the second half better than the first half. Because I think I equally like and really don't like uh multiple things about both but overall it comes together in it didn't feel like two hours to me i enjoyed myself the entire time it felt more like a modern movie the whole first half the setup i was i'm with andy i saw a lot of it coming but then it still got me like the reveal like they how painful perfectly. it was to yeah. this character it was like god damn this is good and then all of the the references to the other movies that of course i'm going to be such a sucker for but i'm just popping off left and right i loved some of these things they did like him drawing the rack and like kind of like throwing it away, be like, no, not yeah. Now. It's like we know not that's yet. coming. We know that's coming. <laughs> yeah. uh, but back. him, him <laughs> getting the this taking place before one and two, and it's just this real subtle moment of him realizing that he was watching a like previously recorded YouTube thing mm -hmm. when he thought he was looking at his brain surgery. And I'm like, this is the moment he got the idea for the saw two trap, Andy. This is it right here, mm -hmm. and that's freaking cool as hell. And then this whole Norway like situation they have going on of the the bad guys in this movie that are just pure fucking evil right which i'm a little mixed on like did, did they pull it off or did they not pull it off i think i tend to lean towards they did at the end of the day of like them being so bad and like how comically bad the twist was at the end and all that love that shit um but i love that it ties into the lore of the other movies her dad's probably the the guy from norway that they talked about in six and it's like he probably is a real doctor. Oh, the that guy that really he was trying healed. to get the he was trying to get the approval from the insurance company. Yeah, too. yeah, yeah, yeah. That was Which cool. is like, dude, this movie gave a fuck about tying things together, and that's why I love Saw. I wanted the post credit sequence to we like we see Toe and Bell go back to that trash can and take that little like drawing that he took out, and he was like, now it's time. Now it's time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, but I, I loved loved all that stuff so much, but the moment that the Saw music started playing, it was weird. Like, it was different. It wasn't necessarily the, like, reveal of it all in the traditional sense. It was more like them kind of in their final trap, like, slowly dying. And this movie doesn't end with a door-shutting game over. It ends with a door opening to a beautiful sunrise as Amanda <laughs> Jigsaw and this tiny little boy just walk out. And I'm like, Dude. what the fuck? Did we just watch this? Is awesome. I leaned over to Nick and I said, "Se acabó el juego." <laughs> <laughs> the game came over. <laughs> the, but yeah, had a blast with it. Put yourself in this kid's shoes too, right? He's just kicking a soccer ball. One second, the next second, he's been abducted by these killers. He's covered in blood. He's being waterboarded in blood. And then right after that, he made two hundred fifty grand. Yep. He's like roller coaster, you know. Yeah. Like a lot of highs, a lot of lows yeah. today for me. <laughs> and we're talking about the acting, memorable this movie day, being <laughs> memorable. so much stronger than the other movies. I really want to shout this kid out, man. When he was laying there and like started like going against Jigsaw's wishes and like trying to save Jigsaw, bit, I was like. I'm fucking feeling for you, yeah. dude. And I'm like, how the fuck did this movie make me feel for this character in this scenario? Like, there's just something so bonkers about what they accomplished with this because it should not have worked. But, oh, it worked. I'll, I'll say this. I think that the, the villains being sort of one-dimensional, uh, I think, worked for me because I think the actors were actually good at 
playing those characters. I don't know that they're necessarily the best actors. Although the 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 like lady the who was the main yeah, I'm trying to I'm trying to say her name, but it's very Nordic. I think she was in um the only thing I know her from was she was in the girl in the spider's web when mm. Claire Foy took up the the franchise of the girl with the dragon head too. She I think was in that movie and I recognized her vaguely from that, but I don't recall the movie too much. She's a good actor. And her, her counterpart, the guy who who is like the, the battlefield guy. Was she okay? Video oh, maybe she. Yeah, maybe that's maybe the where we know her from. But anyway, they're good character actors, and they're hamming it up, and they're having fun playing these sort of evil people. And I think that's what that keeps the movie going throughout the third act for me is that you love to hate them, and that's not something that you can necessarily say for the actors that have been the antagonists in this movie so far. Usually, we our criticism of them is they're either really bad actors or it's like watching paint dry. Um, so this, I think, that allowed the scenario for them all just being kind of locked in this room for the better part of an hour to work. Amen. Uh, we're going to get to the plot of this and talk all about the insanity that we saw after a word from our sponsors. This episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. Do you ever feel like your brain is getting in its own way? I can't even count the amount of nights I lose sleep just because I can't stop thinking and my brain just won't stop talking. It turns out one great way to make those racing thoughts go away is to talk through them. Therapy gives you a great place to do that so you can get out of your negative thought cycles and find some mental and emotional peace. And it can give you the tools to find more balance in your life so you can keep supporting others without leaving yourself behind. Some of my best friends use BetterHelp and love how helpful it can be for learning positive coping skills and how to set boundaries. It empowers you to be the best version of yourself and it isn't just for those who've experienced major trauma. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapist anytime for no additional charge. You can make your brain your friend with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash kind of funny today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash kind of funny. Betterhelp.com slash kind of funny. This episode is brought to you by Immersion Fragrances, where gaming meets the world of scented candles. Immersion Fragrances is your destination for gaming-inspired scented candles, each one meticulously crafted to transport you into the worlds of your favorite video games and tabletop adventures. And most importantly, this company is ran by a kind of funny best friend. For a short while, customers can enjoy a 10% discount site-wide. Yes, 10% off every gaming-inspired scented candle they offer. And that's not all. They're sweetening the deal with free shipping on every order. But here's the real kicker. For every three candles purchased, Immersion Fragrances is throwing in a free mystery candle. Imagine the excitement of unwrapping a mystery candle with a unique scent, just like opening a loot box in your favorite game. Each candle is a work of art inspired by the immersive worlds of gaming and tabletop adventures. Don't miss out on this unbeatable offer. Head over to ImmersionFragrances.com right now and fill your cart with the enchanting scents of your favorite worlds. Remember, you'll get 10% off free shipping and a free mystery candle for every three to you buy that's immersionfragrances.com the fragrant journey begins here no oh, wrong wrong button would you like to hear the plot ladies and gentlemen i would like to hear the plot of saw x and i'm shocked that we haven't done the degeneration x thing yet because i've done it three times and nobody called attention to it Oh, X. Yeah, there That's you what go. We gotta do from now <laughs> Didn't on. Didn't expect that from the new tag team champion, <laughs> one half of <laughs> Joey, Joey, and Joey and the Rocket. I'm not, I'm not gonna move on until you hit it, Joe. I'm not gonna move They're on until you hit up. it. Always go up. <laughs> I'm not going on until you hit it. <laughs> uh, listeners, he was asking for a high five. <laughs> yeah, Joey begrudgingly gave me one. John Kramer is told, uh, by the way, we're this is, uh, of course, I'm getting the help from uh, Wikipedia because I didn't get a chance to take notes on this because we just saw it in theaters. Uh, John Kramer, of course, is told he's got that brain cancer terminal. After a CT scan, he witnesses uh, a custodian stealing some stuff. And then the kid wakes up in this terrible trap that you can absolutely see from the poster with the uh, the vacuum tubes on his eyes. My I God. thought they were, when you looked at this poster, let's go around, what did you think the things were going to do to the eyes? Vacuum. You thought it was vacuum? I yeah. thought it was little rats. Oh, I thought, be like, I thought it was going to be some acid or something. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I no, thought it was I, going in, not out. Oh, I thought it was coming out. <laughs> really? Oh, okay. You guys are, that's crazy. I would have thought for sure it was like a, some sort of ant or spy. Anyway. Uh, it's, <laughs> I mean, I think I like it, it's not only the poster, but I think like I remember in the trailer, look, the sound of like, like, oh, these eyes are about to, like, pop out. I always just assumed it was. Oh, okay. I don't think I saw a single piece of teaser trailer. This is the most expensive trap. I had to buy two Dysons and one of them like broke down. things are always about, <laughs> like, really, But they last a long time. Eyes out. Is it, yeah, it's always popping out. That's true. He does like to gouge eyes out. Anyway, uh, we get a flashback of this kid. Or not a flashback. A flash forward of this kid stuck in the trap. 
And this one, this one I feel like is, I feel like he's softening on this. Because, like, would it be that much of a pain in the ass to just break all five of your fingers on one hand? You don't There's have to cut yourself open. There's definitely in the, the horribleness of the traps. I just feel like I'm like, oh, my God, I'm in a, I wake up, I'm in a jigsaw trap, right? My hand's on the dial. I got these things, and I can feel my eyeballs being popped out. And he, and he goes, turn the dial. You turn the first dial, and it snaps, and I just go, rip. I just yeah. go, and just rip it all the way over and break all of them. Things come off. I'm a better person for it. Do I keep stealing from them? Yeah, he's not going to fucking catch me again. That's what you have yeah. your other hand for. Exactly. I, I, I think, yours. like, I agree with Nick. You just rip that dial and just be done with it, and then your hand will... You know, come back together again. Yeah, I figured out. Like, snapped. yeah, like correct me if I'm wrong. Didn't the guy stop stealing from the drawer because he saw? Yes, Jigsaw he was caught. Him? The guy right. saw him, so, and so he stopped. And then Jigsaw goes, "Good choice." It's like it wasn't right. a choice. You're gonna, you saw me stealing something. He's You're risking steal. turning me in and losing my job again. Yeah. I, right. I leaned over to Nick and I was like, Jigsaw, I was like, I was about to fuck you up. <laughs> <laughs> there was a. I, I was shocked they like, I, I, I agree with like the finger bones being broken. I didn't think that was like too bad or even gruesome to look at. I was like, when are they going to mess with nails, fingernails? Oh, oh. no, thank you. Uh, yeah. Don't smile at me like that. No. Yeah. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I always just think of like this one time somebody talked about like putting a toothpick in between your yeah. toenail and your and your big toe and kicking the wall. Yeah. Oh, well, they always said that. Why did you say yeah. that? <laughs> <laughs> Oof. Okay. We're not going to do that. But I do, I do agree with you. This is the first time I've ever thought like, oh, I'm getting out of this. I trap. can get out of this. No. Uh, here's problem. the thing. In yes, defense same. of this. This wasn't a real trap. This yeah. was him brainstorming. Yeah, of this course. was V1. You of know course. what I mean? I'm sure by the time we actually did it, there'd be individual things on his toes too. And yeah, of course. And that he has. And it's just like, I would have right, this you're is right, Tim, right. I would have loved for that guy to immediately do what you and Fredo were saying. He cranks it, breaks all the fingers, gets out, and Jigsaw's like, no, we got to run that back. <laughs> that wasn't bad enough for you. <laughs> I didn't really think that went through. I want to say that Andy and I had the best ongoing joke the entire time. Because this was, you know, the jigsaw judgment is starting to wear a little thin. <laughs> and at one point, Andy leads over to me, I think, when, when Tobin Bell goes through a door and, like, someone didn't hold the door open for him. And Andy just goes, he leads over to me, he's like, you failed to hold the door open for me. <laughs> <laughs> you, now, you now have to open every door or in 60 seconds or else your uh, fucking head comes off. <laughs> you look back, you still, op you came back and opened it for me, but it was too late. Was too late. <laughs> <laughs> I was already hurt. I love how bad. this is you just my the default thing. Now, because when we watched Saw 3D at Tim and Gia's, you guys went to go get something outside, and it was just me and Andy and the dogs, and you shut the door, and Andy immediately was like, would you like to play a game? <laughs> <laughs> You've been barking your whole lives at people. <laughs> like, oh, Bark or die, it's your choice. <laughs> um, John, of course, goes over to By a By the way, let me just say, hold on real quick. I was fucking on fire for the Saw 3D watch party. Yeah, dude. Everybody, you all should have been there. You, you all really would have loved up. watching this movie with me. I just couldn't, I was just beep bopping and scatting around, but uh, yeah, I missed the review because my whole face was asleep. <laughs> it's a fun one though mm -hmm. uh john of course later attends a cancer support meeting where he meets henry who claims to have gotten a terminal cancer diagnosis as well uh john later encounters a seemingly later he's sitting there and he encounters henry again and henry is uh, seemingly healthy and he goes how did it all happen and he's like well let me tell you about this this new thing he's like I, it's all look here's my scars my battle scar but basically you go down and you pay people lots of money and then um they they give you this cocktail treatment and then they take the cancer out, and in a week, you are free and clear of cancer. They really threw the word cocktail around a lot. They did. And and I didn't expect the doctor to use it as well. Lo I mean, it's a cool, come on, dude. It's the coolest term ever. It is. It really is. You know why it is? It's the like, coolest term ever. It's like when, you know how there's always the complaint <laughs> that doctors don't have a good bedside manner. That's always the thing that they teach that in schools. Hey, you have to make sure you... You kind of get, you get through to your right. your 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 patient, right? Mm -hmm. On a personal level, what cooler name than like, yo, Andy? We're gonna give you this badass cocktail right now. It's a cocktail of a bunch of. It medicines. just thinks we're going out we're going out at night, Tim. We're going yeah. out. With Andy. <laughs> yeah. you know, we're snapping our fingers a we're lot snapping. like this, in and out, uh -huh. in and out of the mic. We're snapping our fingers. <laughs> I love it. We're stepping. I, I will say to going out. This is such an excellent premise of like the setup of it all and like Jigsaw kind of realizing it all. I was a little confused. Like I knew that this was like in like Saw One, Saw Two area. I thought watching this, like it took me longer than it should have to realize that this stuff was happening. Like it was all essentially chronological. Like, yeah. There's all mm. there was no time trickery or anything. Like I thought that this was like Jigsaw's origin story, which I know we've seen a million times in different ways, but like him trying to uh, deal with this cancer, like 
I think it's a little weird, the story that we know so far of him, that he went to go do all this and go to Mexico and all this in between Saw 1 and 2. I don't know why that's weird to me, but, like, I feel like it would have made more sense for this to be, like, Saw 0, essentially, yeah. like, at least the first yeah. part. And, yeah. and then it could have, like, added up of, like, oh, this was the experience that, like, really broke him and, like, got him all twisted. Because I liked when he, like, looked at the, the guy that was going to steal the watch and we see him, like, have this vision. I liked that as this kind of thing of, like, He's thinking about it, but he hasn't done it yet. He hasn't acted on it, you know. Yet. Yeah. Um, and then when it, it's revealed that's not the case, I was like, "This is it's a little weird." Is I, it just because they wanted yeah. Amanda in it? No, I think they really wanted to add some depth with it by tying it into the rest of the movies, and like to Tim's point, tying it in with six of like that was the whole thing. He this is the he, you they didn't have that scene, and they probably could have. That would have been cool, but you can fill it in, in your mind where you're like, "Oh, he went to William and was like, I want." approval to go to this to go to norway and get this cancer treatment and that whole thing happened so i think it does add depth that it's here but you have to shut your brain off and be like how much time has passed in this whole series because this shit takes some time to do right even even planning the half the machines that he would have you need like months of planning to set this shit up best engineer for a reason he wrote books yeah and i guess the timing of it self-published on amazon (laughs) after saw 3d2 because it's like cool so you did all this stuff with Dr. Gordon, is that his name? Dr. Lawrence Gordon. Yeah. Sorry, sorry that I forgot. After Saw 1. Larry. But then prepping all the stuff for 2 and 3, but then you also do all of this and you prep a game in between those. Like, And also you're dying of much, terminal cancer, so you don't have I'm, a ton of energy. But we, we just kind of... Where's your wife? We just sort of... Oh, yeah, not that I go? really want her. Yeah. But also, where is she during Did all of this? Jill not want to go to this cancer treatment? Well, I guess they, at this point they had broken up, right? They had broken yeah. up. Yeah. yeah. So... She's still like a rat. Uh, anyway, um, I want to go around the table. Who, right when this guy started talking, who was like, this guy's full of shit? Oh, I mean, it, honestly, it, to me, it was more the, um, are you talking about like the, the guy with the scar? Yeah. Yeah, it, it, it was the blocking of the scene. Like, the focus on him from the background and then him walking to order a, a cappuccino or whatever and then coming to sit down with him. I was like, too much prominence. Like, yeah. this guy's a bad guy. Like, this guy's in on it. But also, I'm only thinking that way because no, it's a Saw movie. We'd already seen him in the cancer I know, but Discussion. then, but that, like, my thought was not that focus on the second scene with him. I'm like, oh, this guy, there's more than meets the eye. He's not. This is not just a moment of exposition. He's involved. Uh, yeah, too okay. much focus. Gotcha. Right off the rip, I was like, okay, there's two possible scenarios for this. One, this guy's somehow conning cancer people, or he's one of those guys that like just shows up to like Fight Club, where he's like, I just show up to support meetings because that's my thing. And I was like, mm-hmm. oh, this guy's gonna get tortured. The, the shit tortured him for like you know, conning people. But then when he started talking about the clinic, I was like, oh, this guy's uh yeah, this guy's just fishing. He's I, trying to get some new marks. I thought that he was in it, but then he had the scar. So then my mind went to like, maybe they actually have something and they did it to him and he was healed. And then he is now the one that they used to con everybody. <clears throat> Possibly. But, mm. but anyway, didn't have the scar, I'm, so. I'm interesting setup. I'm totally glad. Like I, I just, I only thought that they were focusing on him because it's like, oh, that's a dude from the clinic. Yeah. What are we going to, oh, shit, he's got this cure. This sounds, this is a cool ass premise because it kind of also explains a way, trying to be too official with this, like, they're not just going to, if this is a real organization, they wouldn't just have this cure for cancer. Totally. Hey, John, by the you know, like, yeah. I love that yeah. it was this off the books thing and mm. Going to the website and seeing the video, that's all the stuff that had me convinced. Right. So then my mind immediately jumps to, well, how's this all going to fuck over everything? Like, I was still kind of convinced that. Oh, you thought was... they were going to heal him and then at some point. Well, the... I thought, well, once we see the the shady army people, I was like, oh, I bet you like the armies are going to fuck up the clinic and then he's going to capture the people in the army and like. Uh, put him see, through a game. Oh, wow. for a <laughs> second for a second there was there there's lots of things that are where my brain's like where is this gonna go one was i was like this guy's totally full of shit so maybe top tier i'm like this clinic this whole thing is just gonna be a scam and then john's gonna exact revenge but then there was a part of me a little part of me that was like i wouldn't put it past the saw producers if he cured his cancer and then was just conning Lynn, and she did the brain surgery on him, but it cuts back to the other side, and it's oh really just a God. puppet. It's like a puppet brain that, like, that Hoffman's, <laughs> like, you know, like, like <laughs> somehow, you know, like, I don't know. I don't know. I was like, he was going to be cured the whole time, but it's going to cut to that that part in the slab where we see his doink-doink, 
And he just like when the guy walks out of there, he pops up and it's like bum bum bum. Yeah. But he puts his head back and he zips it back up and walks out the door or some Jesus. shit like that. It's toy toy. Anyway, toy, toy. he call he makes contact that. with uh, Doctor Peterson and it's spelled with a D, so you know this guy's like real, right? Yeah. Uh, and Doctor Peterson's not around, but his daughter uh, Cecilia is, or she refers him to a clinic in Mexico City. Uh, John's like, I could be there next week. Yeah, I could absolutely make that work. She's like, no problem. Now they were smart. They didn't talk about the money really until later after the whole thing because if she just said it's only going to cost you two hundred fifty thousand dollars, everyone in the theater would have been like bing 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 this is a scam yeah right? yeah, yeah, yeah this yeah, is totally yeah. a scam right um so they were smart to kind of not you oh you're like oh they're altruistic they're just doing this out of the kindness of their hearts but then she was like yeah transfer the money well anyway. i mean i loved the you know we, we have openings in three months and like silence and she's like oh you don't have three months do you right well i can maybe fit you at like I think that all of that, I think, is just really Good great thing. convincing staging, you know? Yeah. It's like how we've convinced you that people are actually watching this for the last eight years. <laughs> I'm not real. <laughs> Whoa. 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 Uh, John gets driven down. The, and yeah, to Andy's point, this whole thing's very convincing, right? The cab driver picking them up, the army people coming uh, and stopping them and putting them in. And like this whole thing is a. a it's such a, an exquisite plan. Like yeah. all, great of the, yeah. all of the, like, when she mentions we have to hide this place even from you because we can't let this information like i i thought all of that was just like really well done i thought it was great yeah, that, go for it fredo oh no just talking about the whole like oh other pharmaceutical companies are after us and it's like well yeah because then if you start if you start curing people then they don't make the money and they got billions right. behind no, like all yeah. the pills and stuff so like yeah of course they would go undercover and try to like destroy these things that could potentially lose them billions yeah, I, yeah. It, it was really fun having, and someone said something to this extent earlier, but the person against Jigsaw being as clever as Jigsaw and like as ahead of the game, at least for the most part, like for the first half of this movie, very much ahead of Jigsaw. And then even throughout the rest of it, still kind of, and even at the very end, there's still this kind of back and forth of like, mm -hmm. who's going to win? How is anyone going to get out of this? And that's the first time we've ever had that in the whole franchise so i thought that was kind of fun because the amount of people involved like the army coming and all that it was like what the fuck is going on but yeah. it's to build the the believability of it all and again an, a little thing and andy caught me on this he called me out on this oh yeah a little thing is the night before the surgery uh gabriella the, the young girl who's also been cured brings like a alcohol and she goes you know we usually do a shot of this like for luck and in my brain i'm like oh yeah, I know, I he know. Said a it lot. Out loud, a day I was like, surgery? I was like, you can't drink the day before surgery. And then the doctor like stops and goes, Of course you can't drink this. You're having surgery tomorrow. And I was like, I'm sold. Give me the money. <laughs> These guys yeah. got the cure for cancer. As soon as he said that, I looked at him. I was like, Fucking got your ass, dude. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They fucking got me, bro. They got me. Uh, the next day, of course, he goes and he meets another sur uh, patient who has just been cured but can't speak because he's had throat cancer. Um, that guy's name is Carlos. I want to say no. Carlos is a little boy that we meet. Uh, who speaks absolutely no Spanish except for at the end of the movie no when English. they no English, excuse me, except for at the end of the movie where they have a full conversation in English and then we just forget about that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I'll find the other guy's name, but the guy's like, oh, Parker. He's like, oh man, they really cure you here. <laughs> they really do a good job curing your hair. And, and Tobin's like, dude, I'm fucking in. I'm already hey, in, bro. Yeah, Give me the sold. merch. I'm going to do the Snowbike Mike thing. When <laughs> are you guys selling merch? I'm going to buy two. So I can put one <laughs> just in my closet forever and never wear it again. <laughs> Uh, they put him under the knife, and of course, this is a twilight sleep thing. They got to bring him in and out of consciousness, really sell the effect. And we see the brain surgery itself. Uh, of course, they've got it sort of like scaled up so you can't see the DVD controls because there's literally a DVD player just sitting right there when he goes back into the room. Uh, we meet all the the whole cast of characters: the the, the nurse that checks him in, uh, the radiology guy that like does the CAT scan on it, or, or the anesthesiologist guy. All those people. Doctor Cortez. Cortez. I popped off. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Good looking guy too. Woo. Good looking guy. <laughs> Uh, the whole thing happens. He wakes up the next day with a bandage on his head, and she's like, "Guess what? You're cured." Drink all those cocktails in she's there. Like, Here's this paper, and he's like, "My hemoglobins." And I was like, "Cool, man. Cool, they're man. This to me. Yeah. They're gone. They're my white blood cells, my hemoglobins yeah, yeah. are all down." Uh, of course, I, I do. I did. We didn't notice that one part. There was a, a hidden scene. I don't know if you uh, deleted the scene, but at the end of it, Nick, where he calls the airport, and he's like, "You cancel my flight and charge me to rebook." I'd like to play a game. I'd like to play a game. <laughs> <laughs> now you have to stay up in the air for six hours straight without peeing. You then, you then weighed the rebooking charge, but you left me on hold for eight minutes. <laughs> that is unacceptable. <laughs> you now have uh, eight minutes. Uh, first bell starts going off here. No aftercare whatsoever. 
He's like, I'll, I'll transfer that money right now. She's like, great, I'll see you never again. And then leaves him in a room all by himself. I'm like, he, the man just had brain surgery, cancer, and there's and no he's like, nurse? And to say the goodbye to Gabrielle or whatever. And she's like, no, 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 I got it, don't worry. You don't, don't need worry. to worry like, about that. This is weird. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Well, because she's in a different spot now, right? Yeah. He, well, yeah, but he tra they, they transferred her him over to like, an, like a facility. But there's like, you know, if you've ever seen someone go through a surgery, even minor, they usually keep you overnight with machines hooked up to you to make sure you don't like code again you know but he's like he's just in this nice hotel room i'm like oh this guy's these guys are scammed, got, got, well I, yeah. I i did like her saying like well we have to transfer people out immediately because of the we got to keep for our own safety to keep people yeah. Yeah. And yeah, I, I did enjoy that as an explanation i feel like a lot of this was just kind of smartly explained away even though like some of it wasn't super ironclad there was still enough there to me like okay that makes sense again it's building in me where i'm like oh they're fucking with like you're <laughs> supposed to feel like wait something's wrong here and yeah. then in the bottom of like your dark heart you go they're fucking with the wrong guy yeah you oh, yeah. know who they're fucking Don't with right know. of course john hell bent on wanting to repay his debt to gabriella and say bye to her does telemetry Which also of some sort. kind of weird well, I like think why he cared so much about it. I think he's like fatherly, right? I don't know. Maybe, yeah, no, know, I mean, I, I, like a, I think he saw uh, a vulnerable young woman who, you know, talked about like they cured my family or whatever. Mm -hmm. And they, as, as mi familia, and like, I don't, I, I think that was just something like really, yeah, like fatherly. I, I felt like it was like, oh man, this poor woman went through this as well. And she's obviously not dealing or in the best situation possible but she brought me tequila and that's like what a nice little gesture for me you nice know thing. so he uses his advanced engineering and knowledge to triangulate based off of where he saw the little tower thing there i thought this was i was like this is genius yeah he figured out where the where the actual warehouse was and then goes to visit and that's when the other shoe drops he realizes there's no one there it's been ransacked he finds the dvd of uh hey how to do brain surgery 101 i'm like <laughs> folks don't buy this dvd dude this is this awesome. is awesome this so is so awesome. fucking awesome because when you see the surgery happening and then you there's the tv all of us are like why would you let him see this? This right. makes no but they sense. Do, but and then they turn they into, oh shit. Yeah. It's yeah. perfect. Yeah. They just built perfect. it so well it's to like con. have us asking all the stupid questions and then they're like, you stupid bitches. And of course we <laughs> thought about that. Uh, <laughs> we get a little teaser with this radiology thing, this like x-ray machine that apparently can superheat people's faces. Did you see that? Fucking that was awesome. left. That was left yeah. there. So I was like, why would you buy a real one I mean, also starting the movie off even, right? Like just without a trap. This is, I think, the first movie without... A trap at least in the first like 10 minutes or so but instead we get kramer in the um oh in the mri the, machine the, the yeah. mri machine and like mm -hmm. it's cool. it's tough you know it's like it's a visceral thing to watch and hear and like just the 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 audio visual design of it all like it made it feel like a saw trap and it's just a guy like going through normal chemo stuff like that's yeah. scary as shit or, or cancer treatment uh, of course, he deduces at one point that Dr. Cortez was Diego in disguise. So he, I think Diego was the, I want to say he was the taxi driver, right? Because he's the first person that he takes. No. I don't think so. Yeah, yeah. Diego was... Let me look. Yeah, I'll look I think this up. Diego's well, the driver, and he, then that's where he gets the, the hands with the bomb. Yeah, so he puts oh, the bombs yeah, in his yeah, arms, yeah. and then that guy spills the whole yeah, yeah. beans. Who's the vet? The vet, I got to look his name up. Joe, look up the vet's name for me. Mateo? Mateo. Yes. That makes okay. sense. Gotcha. Yeah. Good job. Good call. That's the guy that was like the anesthesiologist that ends up being a vet. Uh, so he's one. Giving drugs to Gabriella. Mm -hmm. Giving drugs. But he's like, but again, not a bad guy. He's like, I don't want to be a drug dealer anymore. This is the last time. And you're like, oh, he's got a heart of gold. He's a vet with a heart of gold. <laughs> Except he scams terminally ill cancer patients out yeah. of their life savings that they could be leaving to their, their folks. Uh, I have a question. Yeah. Maybe I shouldn't be thinking this hard, but the, oh, the, hard. they ransacked this place, right? Yeah. And there's this 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 uh fucking radiology gun or whatever the fuck you want to call it machine sure. situation. Yeah, X-ray machine. And they just situation. left it there. Yeah. I don't know why. Yeah, must you have think... cost more than the two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Oh yeah. So that was yeah. my that was my only. I was like, that's weird. This that they is would why leave I thought the behind. army came in. Like mm. that's why that's why I thought that like militants were sent in from by the pharmaceutical companies and like fucked everything up and. When I, people there or something. when I saw it the first time, I was like, oh, it's a prop. And then totally. you see it later, and you're like, oh, that thing works? Yeah. yeah. How much? Probably I, I mean, you could look up how much an x-ray machine is, but I'm pretty <clears> sure they're expensive. I don't think you just go buy those for like a grand. Yeah. Maybe it was only 10 grand. It's an investment, knows? dude. It is? You guys 
spend big to make big. Andy, let me pitch you on a little, let me hear it. A little company called Magnetic Industries Technologies. Okay. Okay. Magnetic For the low, 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 low investment MIT? of $25,000. You and I could go on one of these x-ray machines. We start giving out x-rays to everyone in the neighborhood. How do you feel about that? <laughs> hey, come get blasted. <laughs> over here. By people, Jesus. by people who don't know how to work it. If I, if I were those little lead, yeah, I got, I got the DVD. Uh, anyway. Like, What's this one? do <laughs> <laughs> one by one he uh kidnaps all of these people uh calls in a favor of course from a detective Ooh, he needs to uh, find yeah. he needs to find some people it was so exciting uh, you guys <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Look, I, know who that is. He's like, I know you're dealing with the guy who killed your sister, okay? But I'm <laughs> well, <laughs> no, but I love this though because again, this is all the retcon on retcon on retcon on retcon. Where like, there's so much of this story that we now know of time frames of who's doing what for who when, and like now that we know that Jigsaw has this cast of Apprentice essentially, mm -hmm. and it's like cool. There's the doctor that does the the all the medical stuff. There's Amanda who's kind of like the fucking kidnapper. She's in that. Uh, we got Hoffman who is the the kind of like brutes like the muscle for picking people up i guess but more than that <laughs> he's the detective he's the man on the inside that can yeah. like get him all of yeah. the yeah. in-depth info on these people and so for this movie for us to see jigsaw actually make that call like to get the info for the subjects freaking cool as hell awesome but not nearly ladies and gentlemen as awesome as he, after we see everyone being kidnapped we're treated to a behind the scenes of the kidnapping because it's not hoffman that's doing the kidnapping and it's not Jigsaw that's doing the kidnapping. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to welcome back to the stage, Johnny Smith. Johnny Smith, everybody. Is, hey, now, is it a wig? I don't know. Wigging out with Scarpino. You might have to change the lyrics for this one. <laughs> Yeah, no one's questioning. <laughs> Every second this woman is on screen, Nick would just go, it's so fucking bad. <laughs> Why? <laughs> guys, guys. Uh, again, uh, we're done with the wigs. <laughs> Kev, can you try to find a picture of uh, Shawnee Smith soft tan? <laughs> yeah. Because you need to see Please this. bring this up. Uh, look, honestly, look like she reminded me. You can just type Amanda saw tan. She reminded me a lot Fox. of Evangeline Lilly. Yes. Oh. In Ant-Man. Who swears that that hair was real, and I swear that it wasn't, and we'll just agree to disagree. <laughs> Okay. The woman who says that my hair was not a wig. <laughs> You're going to disagree with her? You know, whatever. And we'll never know. Uh, here's what I'm going to say about this, guys. Because I want to be very careful with my words here. Because big wig. Yeah. yeah, it's bad. Oh, oh it's bad. <laughs> oh, my Lord. I, I know this is really zoomed in, but this doesn't... This already looks like a wig. It looks like she went to the Halloween spirit and bought a Beatles wig. It looks like Simple Jack. It does look like Simple Jack. Oh my god. Dude, I I can't like I'm going to I'm going to give you my dumb conspiracy joke and then we're going to really go in on this. They're operating now out 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 in broad daylight. They're not even trying to hide it anymore. There's no conspiracy anymore, folks. We've lost so much ground that Big Wig is now just brazen. They're, Nick. Just bra they're committing crimes in broad daylight. Okay. Nick, these are the these are the <laughs> Nick, these are the types of politics this is stories. Now. This is the type of politics stories where they're like, they're not even trying to hide it from. They're us not, anymore. bro. They're not. Yeah, like the Big Wig conspiracy. The uh, Big Wig as a just a, a conglomerate an is just. Laughing in your face and saying you can't do anything about this, Nick. You've been trying to speak the truth to Stop people, it. and nobody cares. We're gonna go even harder and they, worse. So true. Um, it looks so terrible. I okay. So my thought process is on, on this. Right, was it has to match the hair from Saw Two, right? Because yeah. this is happening in between those two. One and two, yeah. And the wig in that was terrible. But whatever person they hired for the wardrobe, maybe saw a glancing picture of that wig and was like, I got it. And the director's like, I don't think you got it. And that person was like, no, no, don't worry about it. I'm going to cut this wig. It's going to be perfect. They bring it in the next day right before they got to shoot. And it's, you just go like this. I don't, you just ruined my movie. I don't know what we're going to do with this fucking dead cat. This marmot. Marmot. This fucking marmot. God, always <laughs> the marmot. It's always the this marmot. This fucking marmot. dead ferret that's, that's you wrapped around my head. <laughs> that is just, it looks like a goddamn, like, a, like, a, like the fifth member of the Beatles that just never made the cut. It's terrible. But hold on. And it ruins it every that. fucking scene what she's in. But hold on. In Saw 2, she had like the Karen kind of like 
haircut that was like parted down the middle with the long bangs and the spikes. No, I'm thinking about the one where the hair was blunted. Oh, yeah. yeah, this was her hair in part two. So maybe it had just grown <sighs> out. So what's her hair? What does her hair look like when she's in the bear tree? This is so fucking what does her normal, normal hair look She had normal, like, like she, just like she had in three. It was like just normal, like long hair. This is so funny that they've gaslit us into believing <laughs> that Saw 10's wig is how she looked in Saw 10 too. The she's wearing I a want. wig this in every single one of these scenes. Like, why is she always wearing a fucking wig? This is what I had to ask. And, and this is no disrespect to Shawnee this Smith. This is so funny. I love Shawnee Smith. She's obviously the MVP of the series, right? Obviously. But what else you got going on? You can't cut your hair. You know what I mean? Like you got, I, mean, I know. An excellent question. You know what I mean? Like obviously not, no one wants to cut their hair that short because it's not a very good look. But like at the same time, if the director was like, hey, do you mind cutting it a little bit to look kind of closer in style to what you did number two? And she's like, absolutely not. Put me in the worst fucking Halloween wig you can possibly find. Get me the Amazon Prime wig, Andy. I need a blonde mullet. I'm sorry, Nick. The only thing I can get you is a fucking the Union Jack. What was it? Simple Jack wig on Prime. That'll be here by Monday. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, so this that's is what, post needle. That's pick. what it's supposed to look like when it all like falls down a bit. Okay. I, 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 this is but what that's going for. acceptable. Ugh. It's is terrible, it? but it's acceptable. The wig she has in this one is I don't, so bad. I think we really need to kind of look into the haircut evolutions or wig evolutions of Evangeline Lilly in the Ant-Man franchise <laughs> and um, from the fast oh, Charlize Theron. Charlize Theron's oh, hair yeah. oh, sort of God. evolution <laughs> where she has the dreads in one. She has the little simple jack haircut as well. God, <laughs> it's so bad. <laughs> Whoa, it's Look like how me. bad this what is, is, dude. And it's like not even a... Oh, uh, Jay sick in the chat goes, you've been insecure about your hair your whole life. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's what this so... bad wig. That would be my dad. Yeah. Will you wear this bad wig? I'm like, is the hairline even? I will. I wear this wig. <laughs> uh, moving right along, of course, one by one, every single person wakes up in this uh, warehouse. Uh, Valentina is first up. She is tasked with severing her own leg with well, a you, razor you, wire. You skip past the, a lot of the, the fun stuff of Amanda like yeah, getting everyone. all of them like, yeah i, I think oh that the, the yeah no this is how she looks in the majority of the movie kevin like this <laughs> is it <laughs> she's she just walking around this she looks like, like galaxy alien. quest yes yeah, she looks like galaxy, galaxy, galaxy quest, quest. <laughs> that was a choice you a bad remember. one <laughs> yeah man baby so, baby what, what was fun about the structure of this movie is like the whole beginning is kind of like making you endeared to, to mm, john Kramer. you have a question <laughs> <laughs> those poor people <laughs> We're all going to hell. <laughs> Dude, she has to know it didn't look good. Do you like to so play a game? <laughs> 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 but I love I loved that we oh get to this God. part uh, of the movie where because of how the setup uh, of this film was, there's just this like montage of kidnappings back to back. And we haven't really seen that. Before. We didn't need it. I love it, though. I hated it. Me and Nick had the same thought. I'm so glad it you said it. It just happened. <laughs> but also like. You don't like it was just so funny that like oh guess what Shawnee Smith is here a man is was the one who did all that don't believe us let us show you <laughs> it was just like look how clever we are it, she's here I'm yeah, like no it was, shit it was so kind of like uh, that's kind of the vibe that I got of like oh man people are gonna freak out when we show them what was really happening it's like well we know they all got captured by somebody in a pig pig ass we don't need to her to take off the mask every time okay no no no, no, no it sorry, was sorry, me sorry. yeah the reveal of her definitely didn't need that. But the actual acts of the kidnapping, oh, I like seeing those back. Yeah. Oh, awesome. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. That stuff was cool. Her, them being in, like, the, the, the girl doing fucking drugs, which I couldn't get out of my head, right? I forgot what drug she did. But she got the drugs from the vet. Yeah. Right? And then she mm -hmm. did the drugs. Like a pill, right? Yeah. But she did the drugs and then got trapped. Yeah. That's, that's crazy. crazy. Oh. And I thought that was going to come back somehow, and it didn't. Oh. Well, it's just like. She's in the, the whole like, This is crazy. This is fun. <laughs> um, so that was a part that was, that I had a big issue with because then in that scene when amanda captures gabriella she like uses unnecessary force on her she like wails on her oh yeah with the door too. oh yeah <laughs> like, yeah she like Freedom. added like wails on her and then <laughs> just picture her, Does, right, her calling jigsaw on. being like hey jigsaw i killed her by accident <laughs> like, yeah, well, she's not waking up she I also knocks nose. out that guy that's trying to attack the girl in the car too yeah. yeah. So I'm just, and, you have like 
immense brute strength. I yeah, forgot so, so this. I'm, the five star man brings up. She then pepper sprays her. Yes, <laughs> like, exactly. <laughs> fucking intensely. And, she hits her with the door and then pepper sprays her. And then later on the movie, Amanda's just like, no, but her though, she's like, I, I, I sympathize with her. I'm like, right. Was that before, or after you pepper sprayed her face? Yeah. Very excellent point. <laughs> uh, all of them wind up here, and of course, old Tobin lays it out for me. Y'all got to play the game. You guys are assholes. You guys, uh, we, we've seen what you've done. And Valentina, though, like, still trying to be like, no, we helped everyone. We really did. Like, she's trying to stay in the pocket. But, man, we all know better than that, right? First up. I just I just kept not laughing, Valentina, thinking sorry. of, like, any time a challenge was going to happen, Nick, that they would look back up at the office and Jigsaw would be there, like, <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like, hiding behind the wall. Like, yeah. no, just listen to the tape. Don't yeah. look at me. <laughs> the, ta the tapes being here so unnecessary but he's literally staring at all of them you with have like, the, you, there's some sort of microphone you have, the PA yeah. system. <laughs> you have a pa system a and b do you think that like when sometimes hoffman and amanda are hanging out when they're setting stuff up and tobin's like do you have the tape like we can we've we moved past an, the i tape. think we need another tape and then and then amanda goes this is this guy in this fucking tapes. <laughs> Why does he always want these tapes? I mean, does he know it's that twenty twenty three? Why do we need well, these tapes? This does he is know not twenty twenty three. This is two thousand two. I know. Yeah, yeah whatever. Special order these fucking tapes. They don't make them anymore. <laughs> <laughs> like if the FBI wanted to find us, they would just track down who's buying these tapes, though. A singular person. And one person. Uh, sir, it says his name. A guy named John Kramer has bought four hundred of these tapes in the last two weeks. Uh, anyway, Doctor Cecile is still trying to be like, hey, we're all real good people. Don't do this but then valentina's oh, time right. starts also i liked the fun cat and mouse game of him trying to get the lead lady in her house oh like, we should really talk about that one. so this house cool is rat also really cool. i don't know why you would ever buy an all glass house because in every single fucking horror movie it's always an all, always glass, all glass house, house. it reminds me Terrible. a lot of the gold with dragon tattoo i think that house had a lot of glass in it and whoever lives in an all glass house definitely a serial killer or yeah anyway the first trap starts and it's valentina she's up if she doesn't cut her own leg off with a razor wire, a razor wire is going to cut her head off. But I missed the part where she had to cut the leg off and then also jam the thing into her leg oh. and yeah. then fill the other thing with blood. I was like, why can't you just let her cut the leg off? Um, it was like bone marrow, right? Yeah, like... they need science with Kev. Science, science. Oh, here. Uh, she jammed here it go, into her bone. Here we go. I got you, Joe. Yeah. I got you real quick. Sci uh, science, science. Um, science, science with... Uh, and with Kev. There we go. I got Perfect. To do some science. Um, Kev, if you cut your femur, is that the bright bone? I mean, she cut her mid thigh. Yeah, her sure thigh in that. half, and then stuck this little like suctiony tube thing in it. Does your bone marrow just like come out looking like mayo? Is that like sure? How that is that how bone marrow here. works? I don't. I don't know. I've never like. Well, have you? I've eaten marrow out of yeah, like. Yeah, and when it, it does was, look white. It when it was white, coagulating yeah. on that little thing. On the scale, yeah. Where, like it was kind of getting filtered out, kind of like when your sink at the I bottom, just, you get like little bits of onion, and you're like, oh, that didn't go through the drain because the little thing <laughs> stopped it. Yeah, I guess I just didn't know that it like was like mixed with your blood like that. Kevin, well, let me yeah, tell you this. It Kevin. is mixed with your blood. You got like a little uh, like artery, not arteries, so, like. Let me tell you this, Kevin. Mm -hmm. The the saw that they used in that moment was like, this is the most efficient way. Uh, this this like device, this little instrument that they use, jiggly saw. This jiggly saw. G i g l i. Uh, the jiggly saw. It's, uh, it's spelled like the movie. Like the <laughs> with uh, <laughs> the Jennifer movie. Aniston. No, really. Ben Affleck and G i g l i. Yeah, the jiggly yeah, saw. Is. It's like Gilly. this saw that like is insanely sharp that it looks like a string almost yeah and yeah. you just kind of like it's like what a lumberjack she puts it underneath her leg and then just like, like a sample jack. and it is the <laughs> most like apparently the most efficient and fastest way to cut through shit it was so brutal to watch this happen yeah. the real sound time. was yeah, not was great. it went on for so long yeah yeah i i love the setup of this trap where multiple people are in the same room like and one by one having to do the traps with amanda and uh john in the room super sick this trap i loved elements of it i feel like it was and sorry if i'm repeating anything somebody already said but like why were there so many steps and like Too many steps it just seems really messed up to her to make her like well, okay cool the guy in the beginning had to break his fucking fingers you need to cut off your fucking leg extremely violently then you need to suck out some shit and it's like just one step would have been okay one step cut the leg off done done because you, you, you remember saw one 
you have an entire infinite day, of time. infinite time, until you fucking, like, pretty much, I don't remember the details of it all, to just saw off your foot, yeah. and then you're okay. Yeah. This is like, yo, motherfucker, you got, like, maybe 30 <laughs> seconds, given all the yeah. extra time that things are going to take? Like, hell no. Too much. By the time that we get through, like, probably the third trap of this, I thought there was going to be some sort of twist having to do with, like, none of these actually being escapable. Um, because mm. it, cause the first guy too didn't he he almost gets it done he I does feel like get they it all, done. or yeah he, he escapes he but lets him he, free right doesn't he no no that was for the girl that was for the woman on the ground the guy that blew his arms off didn't he didn't he go hey you you won i don't think i don't think he kills that guy right no it didn't kill him yeah there's two people that survive this he he the, i think no, the, no, no, the first guy is like face blown up oh no 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 oh, no, no he had the arm thing no, the dude no, 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 the that's that's on his, the like, tail hands. Remember the guy carved the shit out and he goes and he kicks the bomb under yeah. and it explodes. He's like, "Excellent, you've done, you've passed your test." Like, oh, oh, the you guy, yeah. the taxi driver, the this taxi is very, very. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Not, skipped over him in this. We movie. did slightly. Yeah, when he he's kicked one the bombs away, that's why I leaned on Nick. I was like expecting oh, Tobin Bell to be like, "That was badass, good job." Yeah, <laughs> <Great> job. <laughs> can't believe you did that. And then <laughs> theoretically speaking, I mean, we're kind of skipping you down here. We'll come back, but Cecilia survives, right? She doesn't die. She's still alive in this universe. The doctor at the end. The blonde you know, oh, yeah. see him died and they're yeah. still alive. Spoilers, Which, uh, thank God. I mean, I, I love that. Like, yeah. Uh, keeps, uh, we need a sequel. She has like a Bond esque, like burned face. Yeah. Like Remy Malik and uh, not Skyfall. Uh, frick, what was No Time to Die? <laughs> no time you to know die. what I mean? Pretty badass. Anyway, we're not, we're not there yet. Uh, Valentina uh, doesn't get the job done and gets her face cut off, her head cut off. Uh, at this point, Cecilia wow. is like, seeing the head fall, it was like, hell, motherfuckers. Ugh. The budget has been raised from Saw 5. Yeah. When, oh, yeah. <laughs> When that, when that, yeah, I mean, and all the blood actually looks like real blood in this one, which is pretty cool too. Uh, no more soft 3D. Um, but uh, Cecilia decides, hey, we got to get that little, uh, again, how stupid are you? You're clearly being baited. He left all your clothes in the middle of the room on this trolley. She uses uh, Valentina's innards as a this rope. This was so gruesome. Yo. And I feel like this is the first yeah. time that you see hints that, like, oh, this girl is like not, not here to play. Around. Like, she, if you want to push her to the limits, she's got some limits to be pushed for sure. Cause she gets, she just gets in there. That was wild. Ugh. Um, she calls someone. We don't know who it is, but lo and behold, uh, she gets stopped by, she gets shocked by uh, uh, Amanda. Not really selling the whole shock button thing, you know. <laughs> and it's like, but it didn't really. I'm like, I don't believe it. But anyway, who should show up? Just happened to show up, Parker. He wants his money back, and it's like, what are we stupid? Of course, this is the guy she called. You guys are being baited. It doesn't matter. They knock Parker out. They bring him in, and they're like, we're playing a game here. Do you want to play a game? The guy's like, yeah, I'll play the game. It's cool, but no guns. We're going to take your gun. We're going to put it over here. So it'd be cool. No guns. And at this point, I'm like, they like know. at least shoot like one. Eddie, look, anyone ever takes your gun away from you in a situation like this, and then you get the gun back, fire a couple into the air. Just make sure they work. You know, I was expecting no bullets whatsoever, but no, that's not, that's that old John Kramer style. He, Why? He opened the bullets up, took the fucking... <laughs> Gunpowder gun out of it and put the bullet I, I shell back in. I think the reason for that is like yeah. the the saw theme is like six minutes, so they're like, oh well, we need to fill have six <laughs> minutes of footage. So what can we have him do? It's like ah, oh, he can <laughs> do that. Yeah. Very weird. Uh, next up, of course, is uh, Gabriella, but Amanda's like, maybe don't let her go first. Tobin gives her a pass on that one. He's like, okay, we'll go go to Mateo. Uh, Alfredo said this earlier, but like, this kind of weird. Like, I I feel like even just introducing the like, even taking away the fact that she pepper sprays. Pepper sprayed her in the face after like slamming a door on her and beating the shit out of her. The concept of like, ah, uh, like it's the drugs, like it's not her fault. Like it just felt really kind of like, oh, well, we know Amanda does drugs and that's why she's here. And like it just, this to me felt like the most surface level, this doesn't make sense to me thing. Here's my thought process on this. Maybe I don't, I, I, and I'd have to go back and watch it again, but I don't think she knew what the sins were before they were abducted. I think she just said, oh, this person's fighting back, so I'm going to like, beat her down and then and make sure I get her. Once she found out that Gabrielle was like hooked to the smack, I think that it had a nice character moment for me where she was like, hey, they had that moment interaction where she's like, you know, technically speaking, like, drug addiction is a disease, not unlike cancer. And like, if you have that, you're not 100% in control of like making decisions, right? You're addicted to a substance that your body needs. And he's like, she can still make her own choices. And it's like, okay, guess we're not going to have that conversation anymore. <laughs> you know, yeah, they yeah. kind of just the shuts that like, down. Yeah, I, I guess like, you know, with like Amanda and Hoffman and stuff like that, they kind of just get a photo and Jigsaw's like, go. Yeah. But for me, it was like, doesn't, I mean, they're out there to kidnap them. So they're probably tailoring them for a certain amount of time. 
So at some point, she there's a good chance he probably saw her high as a kite, right? And just going, I know that she's taking you drugs because I've been there. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Either way, uh, Amanda successfully lobbies for Gabriella not to go first. Mateo's up next, and man, he gets the worst of it. Having to cut into your own brain with a little saw, and this guy's a great actor. He's like, wild. I can't do it. This what shit was crazy. Nuts. Crap. <laughs> and here's what I always wonder. You know, I gotta saw my own leg off. I gotta saw my own foot off. I gotta cut into my own head. I'm passing out at some point, right? The second the shock hits my head, like mm-hmm. when I feel that that blade cutting through my, I'm throwing up on myself and I'm just passing out. Totally. Done. None yeah. of these people don't pass out at all. Yeah, I wonder if like the adrenaline from it all just like counteract. I guess maybe, but shit. My bigger thing is this is one of those traps that I spent too much of the time just being like, "There's no, this is st- what, this is dumb, this is dumb. There's no way they can fucking right. do this." Because like, it's if not he happen. was a brain surgeon that did bad things, sure. He's a vet. I mean, a vet would do surgeries, so he would know how to do that stuff. But I thought it would have been brain surgery, I mean, right? The, the, well, I don't know if you pay for brain surgery. From like, dog, hey, but. dude, whatever it is that you've done, whatever surgery you've done on these animals and all that stuff, maybe it's like the like, intense. Seem looking at the facility and stuff it doesn't seem that intense but then it's like you're gonna have to do it in a really hard way like well but they a had a very short amount of time but that's what was interesting about it and it kind of worked for me is that they had cecilia walking them through all this stuff because she's actually a doctor yeah she actually knows her shit so you're like oh maybe she is a doctor and is and and just chose to do this lifestyle instead but yeah i just don't th- th- you're talking about traps that are just a little too elaborate this one was too much for me the yeah. simplicity of the uh, and the psych uh, the psych the, like psychoses of how these traps come together to me is where the impact is. Where it's like, okay, Tim, here's step one. I'm like, wait, step one. Okay, up a five step plan. No, guys, I'm not gonna remember any of this shit. I'm cutting my own fucking brain here. Like, I gotta cut a piece out, dissolve it in an enzyme. The enzyme dissolves and then it unlocks the thing. And the, no, I'm dead. Yeah, I'm not doing this. I, I feel like this one could have worked better if it was like a dual trap and Cecilia had to be the one doing cutting the him open. Like, yeah, him. that's what I thought too. And like something like that, like th- just some level of believability was missing here for me, where I was like, this doesn't even feel like this. Just feels like nonsense. Well, either way, he can't get it done. He gets his face fried off by this uh, this stove Iron yeah. Maiden that he's in. The Iron Maiden one was like pretty. Br- I felt like that part felt more brutal. The brain stuff, for some reason, in this series, like, never bothers me, even with, like, the John surgery in two or three. I was just like, oh, I don't know. I don't know why if it it there it doesn't seem as tortury. Well, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, science with Kevin, but I don't think you have nerves in your brain. I think you could just be poking someone's brain. They wouldn't know about it. Uh, pain receptors. Oh. Yeah. Pain receptors. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, well. yeah I remember thinking I remember reading that somewhere when I watched. Um. The sequel to Silence of the Lambs, oh, where he makes oh, Ray Liotta yeah. eat his own brain. Yes, yeah. that's what Crazy. it is. Madeline Stanley oh, says, uh, I saw this movie twice, and I feel like they never explained the, the mask part or didn't do it enough. So that was a little bit weird because it was like we see in the beginning when the taxi driver's like showing him around Mexico. He's like, look, this statue, people want to go to it. I don't remember the lines of dialogue, but like, here's a fucking statue. And the camera lingers on it. And then like the mask that closes on this guy is that statue's face. And I'm like, this is weird lore shit that like feels, oh, yeah. I don't get it. I don't, I, it was loose at best as to why that was that way. I think it was just someone came up with a trap and we're like, we'll move on. I don't yeah. know. It is kind of surprising I, they haven't done an Iron Maiden thing in any of these movies yet. Do you remember the line in uh, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure no, where the king goes, it. put them in the Iron Maiden. And of course, Bill and Ted who are rockers think Iron Maiden, that's fucking rad. And they yeah. go, excellent. And he goes, execute them and he goes bogus wait Remember isn't the um what what saw was it where the guy had the key in his eye isn't that kind of like an iron maiden that was you know, kind of like an iron maiden oh yeah with the spikes on it yeah the they always go hell extra with these iron maidens they do yeah I, I think the biggest issue with me in this like if i was in this trap is just like trying to navigate like my my head mm-hmm. while viewing the camera because I just feel like, is it inverted? Oh, is mirror? it not inverted? Yeah. Like, how am I moving? If I move left on the camera, does it move right? Like, I'd be screwed. <gasps> we have a TV. Really good at this. We have a TV in front of us <laughs> with, with, like, our, like, confidence monitor. And there's been times I've been, like, going to take a drink looking at myself and I miss my mouth. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I can't even imagine doing brain surgery looking upside down backwards yeah. on some shit. Yep. Hell no. That's twice. <laughs> I digress. Mateo can't get it done. He gets his face melted off. Next up, Gabriella. And this this is another trap where I'm like, seems like a seems like a weird one, right? She I gets can get out of this. She gets hung by her uh, her 
One arm and a leg. One arm and a leg. I love the setup of it, though, because yeah. like we're all watching. We're like, what are they going to do to her? And she slowly gets raised up and then mm -hmm. pulled the other way. I'm like, this is cool as shit. And then they're like, we're going to fucking radiize her. And I'm like, damn, that's messed up. So she gets up there. She has to grab a hammer. She has to break either her foot or her arm. And Cecilia, again, I don't know if, I don't know if I'm giving this movie too much credit or if this was just how it shook down, but it was like, no. Don't break your foot. Don't break your hand first. Break your foot, you'll swing out of the way. To which I was like, but wouldn't, if you broke your hand, you'd fall to the ground and then you'd be Get out, of, out trap. of the trap. You're not, you don't have, then you could just walk away from the radio thing. But then I was like, oh wait, Cecilia wants them to die because then she has to split the money with fewer people. Oh, yeah. She says uh, that at yeah, the end. Yeah, Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. That's Either good. way, folks, if you're ever hanging by your arm or your leg, break your hand first so you fall to the ground to get away from the giant. Bond-esque villain fucking radiation <laughs> trap that's happening up there, which I'm like, I don't think that's how X-rays work or whatever this thing was, but maybe he supercharged it because he's written books like Andy said. Anyway, she ends up getting out of it. She passes her test, and they're like, cool. She's got to go to the hospital. Um, Hold that, on, I, wanna, I don't want to push past this. This test was fucking hard to watch and also hilarious. Like, <laughs> it, it kind of, like, just, like, burning her, and, like, I, I felt it. Like, this is one of those ones we talk about, the uh, the ice one, where, like, we didn't really feel the impact of it because like it's kind of just someone making noises and like wincing and shit and we're like eh whatever this one even though it was just her wincing and you see her face bubbling and shit i was like man this is visceral i, I i'm feeling this right now but then there's that that classic saw level of of comedy where the uncomfortable comedy Dude. of it all when she swings and then she's like we made it it's okay and then it turns to yeah her. It's that like was awesome <laughs> And obviously that was a, a fun moment. Yeah. And people in the live chat are, are debating this right Andy, now. I think get me a Diet Coke, please. JDMFK in the live chat says uh, she'd have to, if she had done the hand first, she'd have to fall 20 feet. And then someone else replied, yeah, but she has to fall 20 feet anyway. Yeah. I'd be like, I'll take the fall first, right? Totally. But I do think the whole point of it was to like, she swings and then have that comical moment where it, the, the machine swings at her as well. Oh, it was great. That was awesome. We all knew it was coming. But it, it was coming. so great. Anyway, she gets through hers. Uh, but then, of course, like dumbasses, they let Parker out. And Parker's like, ah, I gotcha, baby. Mm, I'd do anything for you, baby. <laughs> what a classic <laughs> fucking dumbass movie twist moment. But it literally is the, awesome. like, hey, babe. <laughs> like, okay, cool. It's very Charlie's Angels. Yes. Like, yes. it's so good. I'd die for you, yeah. Afraid I uh, they, they, no one bothers to ask why this machine, uh, which has, which clearly has to be controlled by two people, only was going to have one victim. But they get the bright idea. Let's tie her. And oh, who's that a knocking at our door? Who's that knocking at our door? That is, what's his name? Carlos, right? No, what's the kid's name? Carlitos, yeah. Carlos. Carlos, right? He's just out there at two o'clock in the morning playing some soccer. Because that's <laughs> what he's doing. Little do. soccer star. Little soccer star. Uh, he gets brought in. The, the time. You got to grind if you want to be good. Dude, I watched you know? the David Beckham documentary. That guy, he was out there all the time. And you know, his dad never gave him a single nice word. That's crazy. Wow. You know that? But then his dad was like, thanks for buying me a golf stream. That's pretty cool. <laughs> that didn't happen Jeez. in the documentary, Joey. You didn't watch it. I did not. Well, well, well it wasn't two in the morning. It's because it, in Mexico, they have like the, where it's 30 days of night, like in Alaska. Oh, just like that cool Josh Hartman yeah. movie? Yeah. Until that movie slaps, movie. by the way. Until like the end. Movie. <laughs> well, 30 days it ended. Yeah, <laughs> they were exactly. there for a long time. Yeah. Um, They tie this poor kid up. And this kid's like, what the fuck is happening? It's just, and they tie this kid up. But he's also at the same time, like, not scared enough for, like, considering that there's, like, dead bodies all around. He seems like... I mean, I, th I just feel like this kid's in shock. Imagine, it's imagine shocking. as a, how old are you, Tim? 30? 34. 34 years old. You're a 34 year old man. One day you come to work, right? And you walk in here and there's severed limbs everywhere. And Kevin is on the loudspeaker and he's like, hey, Tim, do you want to play a game? Like, you'd be like, what the fuck? It would take you a couple minutes to get your yeah. head wrapped around what's going on in this. Yeah. Boom. Yeah, little Especially kids if you don't speak English. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Like, That'd be tough. And everyone's speaking English. This kid gets, thank God, though, at one point, thank God. We had a touching scene yeah. where John Kramer and Carlito, Hala. where um, <laughs> he fixed his little he fixed his little tire and he goes, "How do you say pull? How do you say pull?" Uh, no, no entiendo. Uh, ¿Cómo se dice pull? Oh, hala, hala, hala. No hala, no hala is what he says to him. Don't pull, don't pull. I'll just die. Don't pull, kid. And the kid's like. What the fuck is happening? No habla right. inglés, pendejo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, they get stuck to the table and they start getting waterboarded with blood. Where they got all this blood from is a great question. Uh, and then I think Andy said, or maybe it was Joe, it was like, it's reusable. It just gets the blood. Yeah, I was telling Nick, I was like, up. no, we, we don't see there's a filtration. It kind of just, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. it gets recycled. A loop. A loop. Yeah. 
Uh, the giant margaritas at Margaritaville. Yeah. yeah. And you think to yourself, why well, is a lot of margarita? And then you go, they're smart. It's only two cups. So, uh, cup sorry, I was making the rankings outside. Um, so that's, that's why I missed a couple of hours on this podcast. The, uh, we already talked about how they, they uh, blonde ladies broke the lady's neck. No. It's... Oh, no. She did snap her neck. Because because Kramer was like, she won. She gets to go to the hospital now. And the lady's she... like, what the fuck are you talking about? And this is where the she movie lost me. stepped on her neck. This, snapped that, her neck. The movie lost me in all of this. Of like, I... This woman is a fraudster, but suddenly she is a fucking cold psychopathic <clears throat> maniac who will just like step on somebody's neck and kill them. Like the, uh, the, this is where the yeah, this is where I'm just like this. I don't these motivations are not lighting up unless we found out she has murder in her past or something like that. But I just was not really vibing with with much of this like i i again i think back to saw two where mm. people got murderous because the gas is fucking them up and they're just like oh I, we got to get through this we got to survive this just became like another level of i don't believe that this lady would look at this dying woman on the ground that she's known for some time doing fraud with step on her neck and fucking snap it and be like hey little boy i'm gonna fucking waterboard you with blood get like blood whoa blood where did this come from this, I, I didn't really like this I, I think it's the jokerness of it all right the, and then like, they even talk about the cuts and the money like she's so ruthless that i feel like like the, she might have killed them regardless of this whole plan you know what i mean like yeah pa- him, I, her and him coming in killing all the rest of the people like she, i believe that she may have murder in her past with you know, who knows how but, long these scans have been going but, on. Yeah, I mean, to Andy's point, I'm sorry, go ahead, Joe. I was just say, isn't there a degree, too, that, like, now that this girl's fucked up and has to go to the hospital, like, that She's her a loose liability. puts all of that, yeah. her whole business in jeopardy, being but like, what the I, fuck happened to you? I think my, my problem with it was in the acting of it, of not being like, we have to fucking kill her. Like, if she was, like, this desperate woman that was... Mm-hmm. trying to get out of this place without getting caught and taking the money back and like no you fuck like but how does it feel kramer i i got you we, and this woman on the ground she's dying that i've known for a while we had to fucking kill her i'm sorry it was just like uh no let me just step on her neck because i'm a villain i've been it's like whoa i i just i guess just like the way that they framed the evilness is what i wasn't necessarily a fan of you have to also uh, take into account the fact that prior to getting kidnapped she was on the phone with another mark Right. So she needs another team. Yeah. So presumably these people have done this over and over and over again. And she's working with the same people. Right. So she's not killing them after every single job. She's like, oh, we're doing this again and again. We saw a whole sheet of people she had conned out of their money. And Parker has been a part of this. It seems like they all kind of know each other. So, yeah, it, she does get very one dimensionally like Batman villain toward the very, very end. I would have been... assumed that they were moving to a different location. And this was like the end of this one, which is why the place got rained. Yeah, that I, my guess is the location changes, but the crew stays the same. Oh, I thought she. But I guess then she was. Places. I guess she was renting her house then. The house? Then, mm, no, but show her like this is you know like she's living she's big in chilling. a well, luxurious house. The thought process in my brain, and this is how this is set up, is that she's scamming people in Mexico, but the place where they get scammed always changes because eventually the person's going to go, "Hey, I got scammed." And it's where was place. it? Oh, I don't know. I don't know where the place was. And then they just clear that out and go to like the next place in a different part of the country. But she's always living in that. Like that's her. That's her permanent house because she's not scared. I don't know. I, I not just, fully I thought out here, but Parker to be like, well, what are we gonna do about lady on the ground? And her to be like, well, we have to kill him. And be like, we can't fucking. What are you talking about? We have to kill. I, I wanted more desperation and fear from their side of things. When it just kind of became like, hmm, hmm. Guess what? I got one over you, John Kramer. I know your jigsaw. Well, how does it feel to get fucking beaten for once? Like, it just kind of came out of nowhere for me. It wasn't a fan. Uh, of course, this whole thing is a red herring. It is a trap. Yet again, Kramer has not been outsmarted. He has outsmarted the smart people because they go up into this room and they wait way too long after this message starts playing to go to, to go to the door. And then as they go to the door, the door locks. And it's like, guess what? You guys were being really mean to each other before. Now I'm going to be mean to you. Now you have to be mean to each other. She pulls the money back. Oh, that's what's, that's yeah, what yeah, it is. She pulls the money back and the shop yeah. starts. That's right. Ga- uh, what was this facility beforehand? Potentially a chemical factory, I imagine, right? Because there's mm-hmm. now deadly chemicals, a lot of them, a whole bunch, yeah. pouring into the room. I guess the chemical factory, I guess this makes sense, right? <laughs> is that if you work at a chemical factory, Andy, of course, any room might fill up with noxious chemicals mm-hmm. at any given point. So it makes sense that they'd have one hole for you to stick your head through, right? Yeah. 
with yeah, just a little rubber. Yeah, like gases can also go through that hole. Right. I like, so to, think, that I like to think it was for the people and their pets, and their head, their pets could just stick their heads through, and they could see them like, hey, this is my pet. That's really nice. <laughs> <laughs> I never thought about that. Hey, look at Chancho. There he is. <laughs> yeah, the vet guy has to like sometimes bring dogs yeah, to work exactly. with him for a second exactly. job. Exactly. Yeah. Pretty nice, actually. That's a nice yeah. feeling. Uh, either way, they start, these two, of course, turn on each other immediately. Like John called, he's like, she's going to turn on you the second that the shit goes down. And yeah, sure enough, she turns on him, stabs him with a little hunk of metal that she'd taken from the ground. Uh, he dies, and then she's... Hold on, hold on, before we just, like, like speed through this, the, the balance board, blood boarding <clears throat> trap situation. Yeah. I just fucking loved this sequence. Like, I love the little kid and Jigsaw, the reminiscent look of him being covered in blood, like the, the first movie, him being put in a trap in his old, old, old ass age. Old age. And, like, the kid fighting back and trying to help him, like... I just thought the way that it was shot, like it just had me gripped, man. I was riveted by what I was watching. And then when the goddamn music hits and the door closes and they're up in this room, I was like, this is so stupid. I love it. It It was before the trap hits when he goes, but if, if the trap was meant for you, who are you supposed to be? If everybody's dead, you were supposed to be on that trap with somebody. Who's that supposed to be? And she's just like, I don't know. I'm like, oh, this Here is we my fucking wheel. Go. This yeah. gets the wheels turning, and and at that point, I'm like, who's against who at, at, at this point? Is, are they like fucking over him? Is she in it? Like it, that just kind of like opened up a whole uh, wasp nest. Second, so I saw the second I saw the two chains, the two, two like chains. collars. I was like, oh, this trap is set for two people. I realized I was like, we got ourselves a Superman two, General Zod moment here, where we thought that we were depowering Superman and the machine, but the machine. Really all out here, you know what I mean? Remember that movie? Uh, you never no. saw it. You should go watch it. Come back. Go watch Great it. reference. Yeah, come back. Come the back second they, the second they were strapped in, I was like, oh, the the, the last test is gonna be up in that room when they go get the money. I knew it. I fucking knew it. What were you gonna oh. say, Fredo? So I, this is the part where the, it just it frustrated me. It was because it was just like you had Cecilia and Parker. Why put yourself through this like trap? I don't why, know. Why do any of this? Like, that's a really great question, Alfredo. <laughs> you know what, man? That really is. That's a, a really, 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 really great had question. Cecilia, you had Parker. <laughs> why? Why? I don't know because because presumably his plan was not for Car- Carlos to show up. Presumably his plan was to have Amanda be put in the machine and him put in the machine, and then put poor Amanda and her horrible wig through this process, right? <laughs> But still, why? But why? I, that's that would have been the one question if I was Amanda. We we leave. I was like, great job, not criticizing here. But why? Yeah. Why <laughs> didn't you just kill both of these people when you had the chance? It really well, is like kind of playing with your food at that point. Like you're. Yeah, 100%. Uh, and, I, and I would have loved if like once he grabbed the gun and was like, I would have loved if there was some sort of smile from Kramer or something like. Once, once Parker grabs the gun and he's like, all right, enough with this fucking bullshit, you know, I would have loved Kramer smile like, all right, I fucking knew you were going to pull that. Or, or him to look at man and be like, check this guy out. He thinks he's good. <laughs> we got there, this was, there was the line of like, uh, there's a, this said a couple times from this point to the end of the movie of them being like, it didn't go the way we planned, but it all worked out. Yeah. You know? they, they repeated that line to kind of drive the point home that no matter if there are problems or not, things will always work out in the end. Yeah. And that's like one of the lines that they focused on and they put like extra reverb on it <laughs> during the flashback uh, to show. But yeah, Fredo's right. Like once Parker shows up, why don't they just fucking knock his ass out and be like, hey, right. we got your husband who was here to kill you yeah. or whatever. And, yeah. And then they even talk about, they go into detail. They're like, the, the, I guess like the factor they didn't, Hoffman couldn't find was Parker. Right, and they're yeah. like, "Well, Cecilia will bring Parker to us." So they knew that Parker was coming. They planned on Parker coming. Yeah, and so it's just Ma- like it, it, could, right. it could have been they were giving. I mean, much like he gave that man a chance to put back the jewelry, they're giving Parker a chance or Cecilia a chance to like not go through with yeah. the end. You know of what? This. That that is what it is. It's just a little, and I guess that's expecting that Cecilia is not this like psychopath that would kill. That, that was assumption. that's actually but, the X yeah. factor that yeah, fucking was. Jigsaw was again. He was like, "Oh my oh, god, he <laughs> just broke that lady's neck." Yeah, I guess. I mean, people in live chat are saying it. Like, obvi- his whole thing is trying to like give people the opportunity to work against their na- their nature and prove them that they're not horrible human beings. So I guess getting them in a situation where he was proving like, "Hey, you have this opportunity to save one of the other person," 
uh, which is what's it going to be? Are you going to act in your true nature and try to kill each other, or are you going to sacrifice yourself for the other person? So putting them in a trap like that, but wouldn't that just be the blood trap? Like, isn't that same yeah. purpose? Couldn't that same purpose have been accomplished by putting them both in there and saying, like, hey, if one of you wants to sacrifice himself, pull the lever. If not, you're, it's going to be a tug of war the entire time, just like it is up there. Honestly, it's just because they wanted you to walk away and be like, that John, he's that so clever. A yeah. He's a twist. And how does a trap work, by the way? Do you just keep on pulling it? Like, whoever you hold it? If you pull it, it tilts. It tilts. But then, like, does it happen in real time? Can the other person just be like, oh, he pulled it, now it's my turn. Oh, you pulled it now. It's my t like. I think it, I think you would have to hold it longer. Yeah, because they they kept doing the push back and forth. Like I think it's more like. A, like so a it's process. really just like the first but person who pulls it and holds wins. it wins. Yeah. Well, no, like, because I think I think, like, think could you, you like do like small little spurts to drain the blood. I think mm. you pull it though. I think you pull it for the blood to fall on you. Yeah. So that you sat because he he was he said don't pull to the kid, and so he pulled it. So he started dying, and the kid saw it and goes, "Oh shit!" And the kid pulled it. Yeah. So if you want to let the other person die, you, you would just, just do nothing and punish the other person. But if you didn't, if it's you don't sacrifice, yeah, if you don't pull, then the, the blood dumps <clears> on you evenly and you both die. Oh, right. I guess I was just thinking of like, if one person, <laughs> like it, it, imagine the guy who had his eyes sewn shut and the dude who had his mouth sewn shut where they, it was like a versus match, right? Right. In this one, if they were like, no, I don't want to sacrifice myself. I'm going to push. I don't you, think you can push, right? I think you can only pull. Oh, okay. Okay, gotcha. That's where I'm mistaken. I was you thinking can't. like, it's a pull or a push. No. And like, if no. you push it, can you just stay there and be like, fuck you, I won, you know? Yeah. Yeah, no. I don't know. The other thing that I think is I confusing. Push that so fast on you. <laughs> <laughs> fuck you, Andy. Um, I'd be like, rocket, no. <laughs> <laughs> we only go up, Andy. Um, the fact that they. There must have been some foresight or maybe it was just like a built in uh, like way out for them that because <clears throat> if Amanda was supposed to be on the blood table with Jigsaw, how come the weird ankle neck strap that she was in also had like the trick thing for her to get out of? Like, did they build all of those? You, you, you got to think, hey, guys, what if we just built <laughs> all the traps with them just in case? That's my thought. That was my thought process. And I'm like, all of the things, no matter what, have an it's escape plan. Or, or because potentially, like, you know, if someone passes the test, but they're, like, dying, maybe you want to get down there and take the thing off fast. I don't know. But that was just my thought of, like, he, John thought ahead and was like, hey, this might go wrong X, Y, and Z way. We might wind up in one of these traps, so we're going to want to get out of this. Mm -hmm. you, you, you all are, by the way, like, I think you're thinking that Amanda was supposed to be there at the end. It was supposed to be Parker. Was it not? No, I think it was supposed to be I thought Amanda. it'd be John and Amanda. Because he wanted yeah, Parker be and John Cecilia and up in the room. That was the whole thing, right? He wanted the them locked in the room. The kid was just the X factor. Of the kid was the X. The, the kid was what he was referring to where he said it didn't go the way we wanted it to go, but it still worked out in the end. Oh, the I, thought, I thought when Parker asks who was supposed to... Wait, what, I thought he was saying, like, when you're supposed to be on the bed, who was supposed to be there opposite of you? I thought that was him realizing, like, oh, shit, was it meant for me originally? Like... That's what I thought it was for. Maybe. I don't know. I just thought. I, yeah. th I thought the the safe trap or whatever was the contingency plan. I, I think so, too. <laughs> oh, interesting. <laughs> no, you watch this. Oh. To well, me, the, this. I really got the other one. So then, yeah, then you think that the table should have been Cecilia and Parker. Yeah. Against you. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think it was like originally ever meant for Amanda and John. No, I think it was, though, because he gave him the gun was. back with no bullets in it. Right. I the think whole point he, of it was he knew he was going to wind up in that trap. They always wanted that. them to get, at, get the upper hand. Oh, yeah, I he, guess he so always wanted them to get yeah, the upper yeah, hand right. to prove that their true nature was that they'd fuck each other over. Even when they had, I guess you could look at it, even when they had the opportunity or they had the upper hand, they still had to fuck each other over somehow. I see. I see. But it, again, to Alfredo's earlier point, all of that is extraneous. He had both of them held captive. All he would <laughs> have had to do is put them in the fucking machine and say, do you truly love each other? You have an opportunity to prove it right now. One of you dies, yeah. one of you lives. Who's going to sacrifice themselves? Or you can try to fuck each other over and we'll just see how it goes. Remember the one where he's like, don't breathe. If you breathe, you die. Yeah. Remember that one? That was pretty cool. Anyway, <laughs> Amanda, uh, Cecilia ends up winning and sticking her head out. And she's like, I'll get you, John Kramer, if it's the last thing I, I do. Another question about this one. Yeah. So the gas. Just, yeah burns them in that room is the gas not still burning the rest of her body as okay. her head's out so my thought process was it only burns you if you inhale it but it was mm -hmm. didn't they have like lesions on no their they skin? showed his hands and his yeah. hands were fucked up 
So I don't know because when she stuck her head out, her face stopped burning. But I guess, yeah, but maybe then, the rest like, of your body. the rest of your body is burning. Yeah, she's probably burned like a lot, but she didn't die. Well, because like, remember we see the gas leave the room and she's like, okay, I, I, I live. I think she lives, but okay, she's going to be horribly Okay, but it's like she's going to get out of there anytime soon. Well, I mean, you know, I mean, if she won, you, the door is always unlocked, right? But what is winning? I think I think they're just trapped there for death because they are both being punished for, like... Yeah, this doesn't seem like one where he's going to unlock the doors. You never no, know. I, I, I don't, don't think know. it was a game. I, well, it, it was a game, I think Because, like, yeah, the, the tape game. played, and then and it said only there's only room for one of you to get out or whatever, like... Yeah. She won? They're going to get out of it. I Oh, I thought it was, like... Hey, there's a face hole for one of y'all to survive, but it's like, okay, well, I guess I'll, I guess I could like at least starve while my head is out here, you know, and I'm stuck in this room forever. I could at least starve to like, death instead of like, oh, instead like of being, burned instead of being from burned the inside out. Yeah, yeah. Cause like that dude is obviously going to die after she, what did she do? She knocked him out or stabbed him or something like, like that. Stabbed him with something. But I imagine the, the gas shot. would have done that to him anyways. Like he would have died from inhalation. Alex J. Sandoval says they'll fix it in post. Post being solid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. hilarious. They're going to have one scene where before they leave, they're like, what's that big shiny ball over there? And that's going to be the thing that's in Saw 12 or something stupid like that, right? Shiny ball. There, it, there wasn't one. I'm just saying it's all 11. They'll, they'll oh, come yeah. back to this and you'll see a big shiny ball. And like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> oh, we're not going to know what that is for all five there. movies yeah. from now. Yeah. Uh, either also, way. Did they, did they even try to like break the window? They did. Yeah. Okay. Again, okay. they cover the their chair. bases. Because yeah. I'm thinking this is a chemical factory. Like, this glass is just glass. But no, it's also, like... Also, is it a chemical factory? <laughs> I, it says it's a chemical really factory. Oh, I'm sorry. Maybe it's not. I don't know. It just said deadly chemical in Wikipedia. So I just... I drew... <laughs> I drew a parallel. Now. I'm sorry. You're right. I don't know what the fuck this place was. But I'll tell you, my favorite part of this whole movie is uh, they win. And Amanda's got her head out of a little peaky hole. And she's like, oh, fuck. I'm going to fucking get you, John Kramer, if it's the last thing I do. Whatever. Kramer! Cecilia. Cecilia, right? Not Amanda. <laughs> Cecilia. And she's like, and it's like echoes, just like Khan did, where, where, where he's like, Captain Kirk was like, Khan, Khan. I'm so sorry. They do say it was an old chemical factory. There you go. <laughs> oh, awesome. And then, and then we get this scene. Hey, buddy. Sorry about that. Here's a lot of money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, we cool? And the kid's like, yeah, we're cool, man. We're good. See, Papa. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we're good. We're good. We're good. And then it's like, I'd be like, no, now let me ask you this question, sir. Ten years from now, am I gonna wake up one of these fucking things, or like, are we cool? Can we're I just see, walk away with this money? We're gonna money? see flashbacks to Saw Four, and we're gonna see little Carlos stabbing people yeah, and dude. like putting yeah, the mask dude. over. You know, but I guess, the, yeah, that's up. the real question: Does Carlos get to go home, or is he now a baby apprentice? I think he's got to be a baby. Oh, you guys apprentice. went to the bathroom. Yeah, I think, uh, I think so you missed the, the very end. Carlos oh. will return. Was there? That's oh, good. Okay. Yeah, fucking lying. That would have been amazing. <laughs> no way. Uh, no, but we do get another post credit sequence. Hold on. The end of this, though. Of As them they walk opening the, the door, hopeful the music playing. It's the title, the way it looks. All of this was so fucking funny. God, it Mexico, looks, and the Mexico title, is yellower than ever. Yeah. That's always so yellow. Very weird. The, the title sequence and the music was like A Walk Among the Clouds starring Keanu Reeves. Yeah. Like, what a weird-ass vibe to end us on. And then, of course, we get the post credit sequence where old Henry comes back, and it turns out that he doesn't have a scar. That was all makeup. Henry was, in fact, the guy setting them up to get conned. And the machine on him makes no sense, but he gets left in the bathroom. It was yeah. like, why is this so cyber? A little guys? tickler. Yeah. It tickles Shit. you. Dude, the music here, fucking kick-ass. Mm -hmm. Kick-ass. The reveal of Hoffman. Oh, my God. What a goddamn moment. Loved it. The bathroom. Have some questions. We've seen the bathroom no less than 10 times after this, and this body, not there. So that means he gets out. But, like, there's still just too much tech and shit going on with this trap that, like, they would have had to bring in and take out. Seems like they shouldn't have done in the bathroom. For as cool as it was to have this here, mm -hmm. you guys get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah no, I totally sure. understand. Totally yeah. understand what you're saying. Great head of hair on Hoffman still, like, to this no, day, like, in 2023. And then he says, of course, his iconic Hoffman line. Oh, it's an epic fail. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, what, what was that? <laughs> Dude. You had that it was bad jarring. luck or whatever the fuck. He was like, no, he was like, man, you really, you really fucked up picking, picking. It was something to the extent of like, you really fucking picked the wrong. Yeah, you tried. Bad luck. Epic, epic bad luck. luck. Yeah. <laughs> Roger specifically slacked me. He was like, this is my favorite part of the whole movie. <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> it's cool, man. It's cool. And that is Saw X, everyone. I, I legitimately did not expect to see Hoffman again. Like that was crazy, especially with the phone calls. I was I like, "That was the that's only gonna be that." that that's the, yeah, awesome. So how did Hoffman awesome. go out in the last one? 
He's trapped in the bathroom. He's trapped in the bathroom. That's right. So yeah. he's not dead. Oh, yeah, the yeah, the yeah. doctor closes the door. I didn't Gordon. think so. Yeah. That's Woo! Right. Saw eleven. Saw twelve. Let's go, baby. And 14 and Straight 15. to Peacock. Let's go. Let's <laughs> go. This, this was solid. It wasn't terrible. Solid. Ah. Hey, now it's time to rank the traps. Traps, Wayne. They don't rank them like we rank them. Currently, number one, we have The Rack from Saw 3. Number two, we have The Needle Pit from Saw 2. Number three, we have The Reverse Bear Trap from Saw 1. Number four, The Blood Pints, a.k.a. The Bloody Buddy System from Saw 5. Uh, five, we have A Pound of Flesh from Saw 6. Six, we have The Racist Rune Goldberg uh, <laughs> from Saw 3D. And seven, we have The Scalping Chair from Saw 4. What chat are we putting here? Because, like, I'm... I feel like it's the bloodboarding. It's even the saw. It's the in the thigh one was the worst one. I think that was the hardest one to get through for sure. Yeah, that's the yeah. one I watched the that least. That was tough. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but, I'm but, but I'm gonna put it dead last because it's not fun. It's not creative. It's not anything. It's just like literally, hey, take a fucking razor wire to your leg, and then shove something in oh, it. The it bone doesn't. Marrow chunks. So yeah, but like <laughs> when we get the bear <laughs> trap, that's creative, right? You get the bloody buddy system. You're like, that's creative. This takes like a little bit of like. Somebody was thinking and having fun with how this works. This one, we're just like, I don't know. Maybe she cuts her own leg off. Yeah. But it's like, we've seen that You've before. You've made fun of the off. movie Geely your whole life. <laughs> Here, you have to use a Geely song. This movie ruined yeah. Kevin's best I, career. I, I'm down to rank that there, and I'm down to rank it last if you guys are. I would push for the bloodboarding because I feel like it's creative. And the fact that it was the little kid and him, like, there's just something about That's that fair. Okay. thing okay. that okay. I was like, this is, even though the trap, like, I don't know. We're so confused about the details of it of why it was happening, but I think as a trap, it was visually interesting and like things were happening that we haven't seen before. And bloodboarding is a cool concept. I'll I'll, I'll change my vote. I'll go bloodboarding. I think it was fun. Yeah, I would probably not rank it. La I still th I think it's more exciting than the scalping chair. I do too. What I was the too. one above that? But under the racist Rune Goldberg. Oh, that one was pretty dope. I. Uh, the blood, the 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 scalping chair one just annoys me because I'm just like you could have just shot the hair. That's the thing I'm still bothers me about it. <laughs> I'll load a whole clip. Yeah, <laughs> just shoot the hair. Just over. But I don't know that that's how hair work. Like you don't I'm think a bullet would just like cut through that little like tied up Boy. piece of like ponytail? I think I feel it'd like be it would. More. I don't know if it'd be enough. I think it would depend on how much tension. Got to nod it. With your I don't know. That's, that's, that's we not, need you know? Mythbusters to come back. Yeah, <laughs> to get to the bottom of this. All right, so let I me mean, like. So I'm saying bloody, or I'm saying the bloodboarding. Nick says bloodboarding. Can I get one more vote for bloodboarding? Yeah, I vote. Bloodboarding. There we go, bloodboarding. So then, where are we I'm ranking bloodboarding? Then I, I say I'm down for under the racist Ruth Goldberg, above scalping chair. I think it's below scalping Same. chair, just because I hated seeing her like on the ground come back with her hair flap, <laughs> like looking like a wig Ooh. and shit. It looked weird. It was so gross to me. You were, where are you gonna put it? I'm putting it under the racist Rudin Goldberg, but above the scalping chair. Oh, I'll allow it. Yeah, right. yeah that sounds I agree good. At that. There we go. I then. just got to give it more points. Like, a thing gets more points for me if I'm like physically cringing mm -hmm. and like, ugh. I just like during this, it really felt like a lot of forced, oh, we hope you feel this audience in the theater. And I just wasn't really. It just kept on cutting to John Kramer going, ugh. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's all it was. <laughs> uh, now it's time to rank the reveals. It's that pivotal moment. It's unpredictable. This twist, this twist, unforgettable. Is that always the keyboard sound you use for that one? No. Okay. You changed it, right? Okay, yeah. I rarely use keyboards. It was lower <laughs> frequency. Oh my God. Story or number one. Not story number one. This game's daily. Uh, Saw two. Tape on playback. Amanda is Jigsaw. The kids in the safe. I love reading these. <laughs> <laughs> Number two or is Saw 1. He's on the floor. Number three, Saw 3D. Dr. Gordon is an apprentice. <laughs> Number four, okay. Saw 3. It's Amanda's game. Jeff is the husband and has another game to play. S Number five, Saw 6. Hoffman survived. It's his game. Amanda was there for the baby's death. Jigsaw's baby's death. Uh, Number six, Saw 4. This happened at the same time as three, and Hoffman is the second apprentice. And then number seven is Saw 5. Hoffman pulled off framing Strom. I'm going to put this above Saw 4. So this would be number five underneath What's uh, the twist, that Hoffman survived. Look, honestly, the twist for me, not even <laughs> the end one, it's that this was all just like a Eight? ruse or whatever. Like yeah. that the cancer surgery was fa like 
that enough was that was good enough of a twist and enough of a cool moment for me to like when I got home, I was telling Barrett about this moment immediately. And he was like trying to predict along as I was telling him the story. Then when I got to, he was like, whoa, that fucking cool. I was like, right, dude. It was, I thought it was done really awesome. I, I, I'm with you there. And I think that that being backed up by the end twist stuff of like, who's in the games and then being in the game and like all yeah. that stuff. Like it worked for me, like not my favorite twist by any means, uh, but I, I'm down to count them together. Um, Can you, what's number see, five? The spoil that for me. Oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. really? Yeah. Damn. I didn't watch the trailer. That it was like that the medical shit was fake. Yep. Oh, that sucks. That's what? Really? Why would they do That's that? Sad. That's why so I never I watched like, the trailer. Oh, I guess none of you guys saw the trailer. <laughs> yeah. No. 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 Damn. I saw it once, but like I tried to not pay attention to it either. Mm -hmm. Um. All right. So right now, number four is Saw three. And number five is Saw six with Which Hoffman is... surviving. Oh, I think it should go above Hoffman's. Oh, okay. above. If we're counting, uh, yeah, yeah, you know what? I'm kind of there. I'm, I'd be down to put it under Saw 3, where it's Amanda's game, Jeff's the husband, has another game, and above Hoffman surviving, it's his game, and Amanda's there for the baby's mm -hmm. death. Yeah, yeah, I think that's right. This, this is well, more, is kind of, well set up. Uh, but, like, if you're going from the medical standpoint, yeah, like, I'm trying to think, if I didn't know that happened, I would be like, oh, that's so cool. All right, so what are we going to call it, just, it And it was also just executed really well. That's a big Ex thing for me, where, like, I... I, I obviously we know that John has cancer in the rest of the movies, so he wasn't ever going to be cured. But how are they going to pull it off? And that's where I thought that they really exceeded. But I'm still really impressed by the fact that Hoffman stuck his face in that fucking yeah. thing. The trap didn't go off, and it's like, oh damn, that guy like kind of this dude is the he real deal. He's got that dog in him, you know. <laughs> so what do we what do we want to call the Saw X twist? Um. No, can't cancer. kid a kidder. <laughs> I want to remember it years from now. <laughs> like, I want to be able to be like, oh, that's what it was. Um, fake, fake cancer procedure? treatment. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Fake. Uh, the, the, the cure. The cure is a lie. The cure is a lie. Uh, dude, the honestly, I lie. didn't hear that correctly, but I heard Joey and Fredo talking at the same time, and I thought they both said fate precedes her Whoa. and i was like how did they both come up with that at the same time i was blown away i was like what the fuck did i miss a, did i miss a line of dialogue or some shit? all right so officially i'm writing this down so that years from now i'll have to read saw x fake cancer treatment the cure is a lie parentheses fate precedes her <laughs> Good. <laughs> do that. Uh, now it's time to rank the Saw movies. Currently, number one is Saw 2. Number two is Saw 1. Number three is Saw 3. Four, Saw 4. Five, Saw 6. Six, Saw 5. And seven, Saw 3D. Man, I, I know that Saw is committed to the number thing. But, like, I need little taglines to remember which movies yeah, are Yeah, we need to redo this and be like, the one where X happens. Yeah. That's how I am with treatment. Transformers. Yeah. <laughs> I know. That's the thing. It's like, even when they do get very distinctive titles, I don't remember which one's which. I so what was three? Was three Riggs? No. Four was Riggs. Three was, was Jeff. Riggs. Three was Jeff. Three yeah, was the husband. Jeff. Like that. Okay. Mm. Um, I mean, I'm going to put this a little bit lower because I feel like the, like it's missing the gauntlet. I like the gauntlet. I miss the what's next in this like horror house of terror. Next room, next thing, next test, all that stuff. I feel like the tests in this were the weakest part of the movie because they weren't really tests. They were just like, I'm going to put you through some torture and you're probably not going to, you know, and I'll deliver that, whatever. I'll tell you what I also miss, Nick, is the dual or sometimes triple planes of action where yes. oh, the, the people are going to the thing and the people are looking for them and yes. like whenever you go back and forth like that i that's so thrilling to me regardless of what the fuck's happening i would put this below number five i i would i would agree i would agree oh wow below, yeah because i just I feel like below saw five, five or be below saw number five on below the saw yeah. six above okay. saw five okay Ooh. oh I'm gonna go one higher. I was gonna I'm going one. one higher too, where I think it should be number five on the list. Yeah. Fredo and Joey are aligned. I, I am also aligned. I feel like I could make an argument that I think it's better than four, but it's so close that yeah, I would put it under four, above six. I also really like three and four. I know. <laughs> me too. So me too. I think yeah. that's mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, to me, the, maybe, to me, those may not be actually popular. I know that my I, I I don't know which of the movies that are beloved and which ones the ones that people think are crap. But to me, like all of these have a specific thing to them, and this one just didn't it didn't have the 
like multiple planes. It didn't have the cat and mouse game. See, but it didn't I, have the. But it did have that I liked was the the resourcefulness necessary to like the traps all had to be with stuff that could be in this one space that it, you could yeah. build them quickly and like having them together. Like, but we didn't one, really see any of that. No, but like in the results of seeing what the traps are mm, of like right. what was available to him with with all the stuff I thought. Was I, cool. I guess it just I guess to me it's. Where did he get all the blood? It get, right. That's a good question. <laughs> it's a chemical <laughs> factory. It was yeah. chemical factory. <laughs> I guess there's there's two ways of looking at it. One, I give them credit for evolving and saying like, hey, we're gonna do something different. Like Kramer's actually gonna legit be the good guy in this, and these people are actually gonna be really really bad in this. So it's to that degree like that that's something new and that's something cool, and I want to give them credit for that. But it is, it, it's missing a little bit of the the mystique and the mystery when you see him up in the little booth and like the Andy's like earlier joke was like, you know, <laughs> what's he doing up there? What's going on? What, we're, we've, we've pulled the curtain aside now on the magic that is jigsaw in this one. And we're getting a different vibe. Yeah. To I, me, I like, don't know if I, I imagine, love that vibe as much as I like the vibe from the other ones. I imagine when that mm -hmm. one girl like throws down that she was like, well, no, when the guy was like, I don't want to listen to this and he breaks a tape thing or whatever. Or was it the girl who did that? I forgot who broke the was, tape. Yeah. And then Jigsaw was like, oh, I got to do this like in real time. Hold on, I'll have my notes. <laughs> yeah, it was weird. <laughs> Google like yeah. notes app and be like, uh, let's see here. <laughs> <laughs> Grocery shopping list. Uh. <laughs> um, the thing that I, I would rank this higher if the villain wasn't so cartoonishly evil. That's one thing that like, it's, it's not the biggest factor in the world, but it was bothersome enough to me where I lost like, it kind of just made me not care anymore. I was like, this is so stupid. That's so interesting to me, just because I feel like the acting in this one is leagues above some of the It is. It had. totally is. But <clears throat> characters' motivations have always felt somewhat believable. When when characters do stuff, it's always like they are under duress of whatever the hell's happening. And this woman just kind of like, haha, I got you. And also I'm gonna snap this woman's neck and risk the life of this little child. And it just felt really out of nowhere for me. If there was any sort of precedent for that, I, I'd give it the benefit of the doubt, much like much of the these Saw movies. And like, eh, you know, they explained it in one line and said that she's been part of murderous plots in the past or whatever, but that really lost me. But hasn't, or I guess she, every person she hasn't helped, I guess, has been a death sentence, right? Yeah, true. Yeah, but there's one thing between frauding out somebody and stealing money from them and Stepping on a woman's neck in cold blood and snapping her neck. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's true. You know. So, Fredo has it at five. Joey has it at five. Yeah. I have it at four. Andy has it, it at six. I'd have it at six also, yeah. And he has it at six. So, that puts it at number five, everybody. Um, we will return next week with Jigsaw. Uh, and then the week after that with Spiral from the Book of Saw. Uh, let us know in the comments below what you thought of Saw x alfredo where can people find you uh youtube.com slash at dog bark show or on uh roosterteeth.com as well um yeah we're uh we're toying with a lot of live action stuff we cleaned the entire office and facility with uh high-powered leaf blowers that was one of our latest videos. <laughs> <laughs> we cleaned the office. Everybody go so check that out. Yeah, way to do it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but until next time. See you later. <laughs> Make sure you click like, comment, and subscribe.